Ah, blessings and welcome to Catching Up with Jacob, episode 199. So please be sure to join us next week for our 200th episode when Jacob and Marco will be back with us. Uh, this week, Jacob's in the Czech Republic and Marco's in Canada. So please pray for them, pray, uh, pray for their teachings there and uh, pray for the believers there in Canada. Uh, um, so please, Marco's got to go there. Uh, but today we have with us, we've got David Lister. So welcome, David. How are you doing? I'm doing well today. Looking forward to catching up with Jacob without Jacob, but we do have a special section for him that follows, right? Yes, awesome. Amen. Looking forward to that. And also with us today, we have uh, guest uh, Sandy Simpson. Thank you for joining us today, Sandy. Glad to be with you guys uh, today, and uh, always a pleasure. Uh, so glad you could be with us. And also, Jay, thank you for being here today. And Jay, you're also on location. I, I am. I am in uh, Houston, Texas. So, yeehaw. Awesome. Fantastic. Free state of Texas. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Great to hear that word free nowadays, I tell you. Especially with all this going on in the world, the erosion of our freedoms is just ramping up so much. Well, there's quite a bit to talk about today, but uh, are there any announcements first off that need to be made? Well, I can tell you, Jacob was coming to America after he wraps up in the UK. He will be uh, in New York at Open Door and Open Door in Baltimore the weekend of 16th, 17th. Then he's coming to uh, uh, Dover, Tennessee the following week. Uh, the dates are up on the itinerary page. And then, of course, Thanksgiving weekend, we have a big conference with Jacob and Tim Leach and my friend Eric Wallhausen on home churches and right Moriel Mia, if you're interested in attending and getting some uh Coming down and spending Thanksgiving with us and your and your eternal family. Awesome, yeah. And for those who are in Canada, who are in the area, Marco is in Kitty Mat today. So there's a, a session tonight at seven p.m. at the Kitty Mat Chamber of Commerce. Again tomorrow at ten a.m. and seven p.m. and then again on Sunday at seven p.m. And also there's the uh, UK Moriel UK conference and the Moriel Scotland conference coming up the first two weekends of November. The details will be on the website for them. That's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right? Yes, yes. Yep, awesome. Okay, well, I guess the big news of the week that's had everybody talking has been the, <laughs> the, the debate, <laughs> if you want to call it that. Um, we probably Chamber thought of Commerce, what was going to be the first and probably the last uh, debate between the two presidential candidates, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. This time it was watched by approximately yes. 60 million people. The debate or the okay, well, I guess debate the debate from your point of view was ABC television at its worst and further proof that the mainstream media today is nothing more than a propaganda platform for the establishment. We all knew from the get-go it was going to be biased, but what we saw, what we witnessed, was actually bordering on being classified as election interference. And I've even heard it described by some as being ABC's election contribution to the harris Walsh campaign. And there are even calls for ABC to be prosecuted over this. There were reports even stating that Harris had taken acting lessons in preparation for this all pointing to the fact that this was just one big show and was not about the issues at hand. Her exaggerated facial expressions had to be seen to be believed and was something like out of a really bad movie or one of those really bad, cheesy movie serials from the 1930s. But at least those 1930s movie serials had a bit of entertainment value. Uh, this did not. This was a hard slog to get through, I tell you. I kind of knew it was going to be bad when they dragged out... <laughs> In the lead up to it, they dragged out uh, Jan Pastasaki, the commentary in the first place, and then they talk about Harris's earlier days, which <laughs> uh, I think uh, Tim Waltz best described yesterday when he referred to him 
as her younger days as a prostitute. Now, I just want to show you a short clip that was uh, played on Fox News about the debate, and then I'd like to get all your thoughts uh, regarding it. Well, I know who won, but I know who lost. It was the American people. Uh, you know, you can say if you complain about the refs, uh, you're losing. Well, if the refs are corrupt, you got to com complain because everybody lost. I actually got dumber watching it. I felt like my brain was being waterboarded by the sheer nonsense of these idiot moderate moderators. But we're so, so, uh, so sidetracked by the mechanics of the debate, the muted mice, that we forgot about them. I honestly don't know how anyone can decide who won the debate. That's like trying to guess the price of a painting that you suspect is a forgery. You can't objectively decide a winner in a sham competition. This is truly the first DEI debate where one candidate was subjected to a high standard and the other was held to no standards at all. They removed the essence of fairness to achieve an outcome that could not be scored. You cannot score that. That is why you can't say who won or who lost. A liberal should be ashamed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, let, let me let me do take two on that. Uh, yes, the problem is liberals don't have any shame. <laughs> yeah. That that was excellent. His commentary on that was absolutely to the point. You know, it, 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 the whole thing was a was a put on sham, and. I, it doesn't give the American people any idea of who they should actually actually be voting for because they don't know what their positions are. All they saw was this acting job. Yeah. yeah. And every every time Trump seemed to open his mouth, they tried to shut him down. Yeah. It was sure the past. David, what were your thoughts on the debate as a whole? Well, for me, I thought that Kamala was, like you said, was held to no standard and no fact checking. But Trump was. They fact checked him and things like that. But I mean, like, she got away with so many lies. I mean, uh, I could tell you, she said, oh, I'm just a middle class kid because they're trying to reach the middle class, the, the uh, blue collar people. But, you know, her father was a professor at Stanford yeah. a book on Marxism. Her mother was a biomedical scientist at Berkeley, the mm. most liberal institution in the United States, if not the world. And then and she was incapable of answering the most damaging question by avoiding it. The first question that came out was, well, are people better off today? There than they were under Trump, and she just avoided the question that with and talked around in circles, never coming back to answer. And because she can't, if she answered it, she would have to say, No, people are not better off now. She, she lied about a Trump tax sales tax, she lied about uh, his 2017 tax cut that helped everybody, even the IRS, who was not a friend of most people, showed that the average all-income brackets benefited from that tax cut. You know, she brought up January 6th and said it was our worst attack on democracy since the Civil War. But I think she forgot a couple things. I, I think there was like, like World War One, World War Two, World War Two. And I th and you know there were other problems that we've had there, and one would be nine eleven. That was quite the attack. So she she doesn't know her history, which is obvious. And the big lie that went unchecked that even even Democrats have been saying it's not true. CNN said it was not true at various times. Project twenty twenty five which was a project done by the Heritage Foundation, which are a bunch of neocon rhinos, which Trump has, has distanced himself. And then 
she she says she wants to restore Roe. Now, I think that Trump got himself a little trouble by talking about the vote that they're having in Florida, the six-week heart bill. He should have just said simply, this old Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court. It's now a state question, an individual state question that um, that the people themselves will vote on. And there's not a state in the United States. And this is what's disheartening to me is all the states are still allowing abortion. We still are worshiping Molech. And this is going to be a judgment on us. And everything, whether it's whether you kill a child at two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six, it's still the death. And then so that that's a problem. And she wants to restore Roe v. Wade, but she can't because it's been overturned by by the Supreme Court. And, you know, she made so that includes uh, the the. Uh, um, the thing on abortion and then, but other than she, she denied the, the part that, uh, that, um, that Trump said concerning, um, concerning 24 weeks, I mean, 27 or 32 weeks, you know, she just, uh, full term abortions which which have happened, you know, they have happened. They continue to happen. That people can have an abortion. I think in five states, if my memory serves me right, that go all the way up to birth. And in fact, in Virginia, there were several births that happened to full-term babies, and they just let die. So she's wrong on that. She was never fact-checked, and so that's exactly what you guys said about. Or what uh, Greg, uh, Greg Gutfeld said? How can you score it when it's weighted? You know, you bring in uh, Kamala's sorority sister. Well, you know, it's a bad thing because you haven't got an advocate there. But that as sorority sisters or fraternity brothers, you have a pledge to you know always prefer them. So, and she did her job and she kept her pledge from her peror- her sorority. So those are few of the things that were shame and shameful that she was allowed to lie. But then this is our modern day politics from the Democrats. Yeah. To David's point, I would just point out that in Proverbs, it says dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord. And that whatever we want to call that, it wasn't really a debate. It was more like a massacre. That was an abomination to God because the truth was nowhere in sight. The truth was obfuscated by ABC. And who better to do that than Disney? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now, we, a recent survey came out just this week, too, and it was showing people's trust and ethics in various companies. Now, people's trust in the media and journalists is at an all-time low, um, as revealed by this survey. But even even lower than them are that of politicians. Journalists still have an approval rating of around 19%. Politicians, senators, members of Congress are is down as low as 6%. Do you think people will be persuaded by what they saw, or do you think they will see through this uh, media sham? That's, that's the sad part, is that... Uh... People have been taught to be led by their emotions today. And so that's what the Democrats are going after with Kamala, uh, appealing to an emotional, you know, emotional responses than actually dealing facts. And so a lot of our newer, you know, the, the millennials, it's all about their emotions and how they feel about something or, or this or that. They're, they're not interested in the facts at all which is why she's been able to get away with doing what she's doing. Um, So you've got basically a generation gap happening. (laughs) You've got the older generation that's saying, you know what? We want to deal with facts. We want the facts on what's been done or hasn't been done so we can make an informed decision. 
The younger people, though, unfortunately, and and some other groups are just interested in, you know, having somebody that, oh, well, she's so cute. And she's, you know, <laughs> she really knows how to talk, you know, and they're, that's what they're impressed with. And so I, I learned after Obama got reelected not to trust the American people at all because <laughs> the American people in general are not paying attention. They're asleep at the wheel. You know, to, to, to Sandy's point, uh, Davey, I, I couldn't agree with them more. And, and, and moreover, I mentioned this before, and I'm going to say it again. What you're seeing with this debate is how the media will treat the man of lawlessness. You're seeing a sneak preview of how the Antichrist PR team is going to do it. There's going to be three people on the stage that are all protecting the narrative of the Antichrist. Kamala Harris gave us a preview of how the media will collude with the great leader to come. And it's really that simple. It's all a set up to that for sure. And uh, all the globalism and the Marxism and all this other stuff all p plays into it. And uh, people have been brainwashed. And so yeah. you get enough of those brainwashed people together, and they can, they can ram something through, you know? Yep. You know, Adding to that, we know that some of the three th the three things that the the uh, will happen during the first three and a half years, of course, is deception, persecution, and apostasy. And so they're going to persecute people, as we're already seeing in places like England and other places where, if you say misinformation, in other words, if you tell the truth you're going to go to jail. So they're, they're already starting that, and so people are starting to shut down. They're afraid to say anything. And so you'll see that persecution can be, oh, you, told, you gave somebody the gospel. That's hate speech. That's right. misinformation, et cetera. And then so from, from the persecution, then there'll be apostasy. People will leave the faith because they're not well enough grounded in it, and so you will have that. And, and of course, what goes with all that is the deception. The lie will be the truth. The truth will be a lie. And people will not be able to judge, as you said, um, uh, Sandy, that people can't tell the difference because, one, yeah. they can't critically think. And, two, they don't have a sound mind. Yeah. and a discerning spirit to tell the tr difference between them. The Bible is so clear when it said that in the end times, people would not would lose the love of the truth. And that's exactly that's right. what we're seeing today. They don't love the truth. They don't care about the truth. You know, whatever yeah. justifies my existence, whatever goes along with my, you know, I ideologue <laughs> ideas, you know, that's what's important. It's not the actual facts of, of a matter. And uh, that's when it get, becomes scary because you can see that a worldwide cult is being developed by the enemy and uh, it's all leading. We all, we know where it's leading to. Yeah. It's leading yeah. to the kingdom of the antichrist. Yep. And actually it's so, it's so it's accelerating so quickly at the moment. It's just unbelievable how much things are ramping up. And actually, coming back to the misinformation and, you know, the truth being called a lie and the lie being called the truth, we're seeing so much of that at the moment. But that's going to get even worse, too. Uh, later on, I want to talk about the misinformation bill that they're pushing through Parliament here, which is just going to make uh, this country a dystopian nightmare to live in. But um, uh, one of the other issues that was brought up in the debate was the issue of Israel, and um, it's now 342 days since Hamas committed their atrocities on innocent civilians back in October 7th of last year. Now, both candidates were asked how they would reach a ceasefire deal, a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. Harris was calling for a two-state solution and that war must end immediately. She said Israel had a right to defend itself, but basically was hamstringing Israel on how it may defend itself. 
basically limiting it to just intercepting incoming fire and not being allowed to take any offensive act- actions. So that's no defence. And meanwhile, her administration is still pres- presently holding up the supply of munitions to Israel. Her actions actually speak louder than words. She, you know, she's simply speaking out of both sides of her mouth here in the debate just in order to get vote. Now, I want to get your thoughts. If she is elected, how much do you think this will embolden Israel's enemies? Um, will this further escalate wars and the tensions both abroad and on home soils? And what, act, and what impact do you think this will have both on Israel and us here in the West? Well, well for me, because they're cutting off arms, people, uh, their enemies will be emboldened, of course. And kind of, and ever since Obama, when we had these withdrawals and his invention of ISIS and the many other problems we have, and and they're rearming Iran and re allowing them to come and sell oil and produce lots of money, produce arms, South Korea selling arms to our enemies. And in fact, one of the proposals from Biden and now uh, and with Obama before, is when they pull out, they leave our weapons behind. And so not only have we allowed them to make money and then send money to these other states, uh, the Houthis, etc., you now leave our great weapons there, you know, because they did the withdrawal horribly, where you're supposed to get your people out first, get all the arms out, and then the soldiers watch the air base and everything and hold back the 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 Taliban and then the last men pull out and but he didn't do that he just left the weapons left american citizens and barely got our people out and it cost us at least 13 people that he has not acknowledged and you know, so yep, we know still that, that, that that this has been this has been the problem with the way the the State Department and the executives under the Democrats have been working. And, and you know, on top of that, uh, part of this on a southern side of this is the border bill, you know, that she lied about that. She categorically lied about the bill that. That he ve- that Trump sort of vetoed. He didn't veto. It just said it was bad because what it would have done, it would legitimized l- letting at least five thousand illegal aliens in a day, and if they were a more were to come, on the whim of a bureaucrat, they could increase that number. So and she was horrible on it. She went down to Guatemala. And they offered to be able to start cutting off the supply of immigrants, and she turned it down. Uh-huh. That shows you they want this nation invaded from the south, and they're willing yes. to allow people like the Houthis who have shot, and there's at least three or four oil tankers burning as we speak. And we've mm-hmm. had to pull our ships back so that the Houthis can't attack our carriers, things like this. So there's a war on the right, there's a war on the left, there's a war from Iran, and man, the world is on fire and our president's on the beach taking a holiday. Right. It's it's on fire, and uh, I'm going to sound sexist, but I don't mean it that way at all. Because I have no problem with a woman being a president, but right now, with their weak need policies, what do you think the Muslims are going to think of a female president? They're going to have what less respect. They're, they're going to have less respect for America than they already have. This is not the time to be lessening the impact. Now is the time to get somebody in there that can actually do something, you know, make a strong response because that's the only thing they understand. They love it when we're weak. I mean, Biden has been the weakest ever, you know, but um, I just think this is a bad. Americans need to think this this through is all I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Look, I think that one of the most <clears throat> damaging things to America's reputation, you know, in the last several years has been the handling or, or the mishandling of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Because, look, it was it was to say in First Timothy B chapter five. You, I know, and it's talking about a man in his household, but I think the same principle applies here. A person who won't take care of their own um, is worse than an infidel. And uh, yep. I guess we're seeing that here that um, there's no Amer America showed to the world that it doesn't care for its own, and the same's happening with the border policies. Yep. It's not protecting its people from what's coming across the border. Uh, in fact, it's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely yeah, disgraceful. Right. Now, this is one part of the debate where I thought I was kind of thought Trump would have excelled him. But again, uh, the media sh shut him down, um, Muir, and that jumped on him like crazy, especially yeah. when uh, Trump brought up the fact that he was saying, you know, pets, you know, were being taken and eaten by uh, Haitian yes. immigrants in uh, Springfield, Ohio. You know, um, they shut him down and said, no, that's not true, that kind of thing. But look, it, it is, it has been proven to be true. And it's not just in Springfield, Ohio. We've got reports of it happening in Queens, New York. And um, Texas. again, Texas, yes. Um, cats are being killed. And, yeah, not just for food, but also as part of voodoo ritual sacrifices. Um, there's a report just come out in the last few days about the rise, the, the disturbing rise of animal sacrifices that are taking place. And this is because of the immigration policies. Another oh, report yeah. just came out a couple of days ago, basically saying we have record crime statistics now. Um, this is, you know, in the US, um, violent crime is up nearly 40% compared to 2020. Rape is up 42%. Aggravated assaults are up 55%. Violent crime with a weapon is up 56%. Violent attacks on strangers are up 61%. Car theft is up 42%. And the most serious forms of violent crime are up 55%. So, look, you know, the US is under siege. And this doesn't yeah. include the migrant crime and migrant rape spree that has open ta taken cities in recent months. We're also hearing reports, you know, um, increased reports of migrants tied to an ultra-violent gang from Venezuela, known as, uh, I'm probably not going to pronounce this right, Friend de Aragua. Uh, U.S. law enforcement and immigration officials have launched more than 100 investigations of crimes tied to suspected members of the violent Venezuelan gang, including sex trafficking in Louisiana and the point-blank shooting of two New York City police officers according to the to Department of Homeland Security officials. Um, but the reports I read of the sex trafficking were particularly disturbing. But um, I guess the New yes. York police have got one new idea they've come up with to help combat this, and that is that they're going to be required to have their pronouns displayed on their uniform by the <laughs> beginning of 2025. So I'm sure that's so going to help. That'll do it. Yeah. But... Um, you, what, what, what's happening here is kind of like law, lawlessness is increasing and abounding. And that's that, right. What do you think will happen? Is this likely to un increase under a Harris Walsh regime? Oh, of course, because Absolutely. they're planning this. Like we're allowing the, uh, we're like we said, we're allowing the invasion. We're allow we have a double standards. We say, you know, you give a person an amnesty state or an amnesty city. And so we've seen, we're seeing people do vile crimes. In fact, there was a police officer who said that he had to release a double murderer. So, you know, sanctuary is supposed to be a place of safety, but it's supposed to be a place of safety for all. But what's happening is these people are committing vile and horrendous crimes against Americans and what they they get released on fifty dollars bond. You know it's five hundred, but you get a bailsman on giving fifty, and then you're out of there. So so that's terrible what's happening there. But also on another thing, if I could, Davy, you know they this is about protecting America. She talked about she won't ban fracking, but she said I you know she didn't say it here, but she made herself very clear and 20 that she would but the thing is is what they have done 
and no one's talked about this, is that they've not released any leases, oil leases for drilling in the Gulf of Mexico or in other government places. So it takes two years, three years, four years to develop those leases and and get to the oil and things because sometimes they're very, very deep and it, and you have to develop them. So what happens is we're going to be running out of oil over here and we should be getting to this oil, but they've stopped leasing. So we've got a four-year gap on that. I know fracking, look, it's generally, you can get fracking started pretty quickly, but we do need fracking for natural gas, but we also need oil to keep our machinery running and the world's machinery running because we have quite the the oil reserves, you know. So, mm-hmm. so that's have, another way they're not protecting. They have not opened up leases up there in Anwar. That's Got to be That's right. the biggest oil uh, reserve, I think, in the world. It's it's the got world. the most oil up there. Yep, and there's and other places uh, too, Sandy. Yeah, besides right. Anwar. Yeah, so yeah. it's you no know, government this, leasing of land for oil. This is this is why Trump keeps saying drill, drill, drill because he knows that if we can get more of that stuff going, that will correct the economy. That was the almost the main reason the economy went in the toilet is that, you know, all of a sudden we weren't producing, uh, you know, the money that we should be getting and, um, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, it, you know, the price the of trucks, gas and oil went up. Uh, I mean, these trucks and some of them cost a thousand dollars to fill up their tank. Oh, of course, you know, food. Is gonna is gonna go up, you know, and yeah. um, so the you know that's been they absolutely caused the the uh, the inflation that we have and the you know the the rise in the prices of food and everything else they they caused it and of course it was because they did it on purpose because it's all part of Marxism you want to get every control of everything from the government side. You know, and so, you know, they're trying to control everything. But the thing is, is it always has the opposite effect. It ruins the economy. That's why the economy has been ruined in every single country that's tried these kind of ideas. Look at Venezuela. Look at the, you know, Soviet Union. It's just on and on. So, you know, it's um, it's a problem. And, you know, right now, like him or not. <laughs> Trump is the guy who knows what the problems are, and he he uh, was able to effectively uh, deal with some of them before. He's got a good track record. And um, I said years ago when they started having border problems, I said right away, you watch. We're going to have gang problems all over the United States. And that's exactly what's happening now. Also, you know, it's interesting that Kamala lied about Trump when she said, I'm the only one on this stage that has prosecuted international gangs. Well, he was the chief executive in charge of the Justice Department. He was he was having ICE and other police organizations round up these gang guys and arresting them for crimes here and then others shipping them out of the state. So. So she, she was just, actually lied. She was actually prosecuting these guys and letting them go. Yeah, you know, she raised money for their bail. <laughs> she didn't burn down our cities. <laughs> she mentioned that, but uh, he was shut down immediately oh, yeah. by, uh, by by Kamala and the ABC uh, moderators. Yeah. You know, right. to take to take a line from from something that Ken says quite a bit. If you take the forty thousand altitude view of everything what you're seeing is our chief rivals china russia they don't have a problem with energy they drill 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 all they want they make their, their economy is based upon taking taking advantage of their natural resources 
And do they have problems with lawlessness? Cold. They do not have problems with lawlessness because they don't have border issues. So the United States and the West are the only places you see where you have a divided uh, politics that really hate each other and want to kill each other, basically. We're on, we're on the level of a civil war. Don't, don't fool yourself. And yeah. this, there's a unity with our rivals that makes them emboldened when they see Kamala Harris belittle Trump and Trump snap back. There, there's definitely an emboldenment that you're going to see in China with the way they take uh, the next few months. I'd be, I would not be surprised if they built more islands in the South China Sea. Uh, I would definitely not be uh, surprised if you know Russia decided to do some more counterbalancing in the Middle East with the yeah. United States. Yeah. You look, look I, I've got a, f- a lot of friends on Guam, and they're telling me, that they are going to build an iron dome over Guam because they already see that China is coming for all the islands over there. Yep. Philippines, they want, they've got their eyes on them, harassing them all the time. Philippines. So they want to control the world. And part of this philosophy that you're hearing us talk about, this comes from the communist playbook. This comes from, from China. And we know that the vice president, He's been over there over 20 times, did his honeymoon over there, and on Tiananmen, he got married on uh, this, when the slaughter of the young man in, at Tiananmen Square and the others protesting for freedom. But he now is under suspicion because he put a high con- a CCP official into a board that was very important in Minnesota. So he's... People are looking into that. So we're good. if he is elected, we're going to have a communist China, not just a sympathizer, but a co-comrade. Yeah, that's right. Totally right. When, look, when we've we've seen the <clears throat> the devastating effects it's had on us here. You know, <laughs> uh, the Andrews government and our government getting in bed with this CCP is it, not good. Um, one of, one other issue she mentioned too, she took great delight in actually in bringing up too was the January sixth issue again. Yeah. She managed to bring that up, calling it the biggest assault on American doc- democracy since the Civil War. Yeah. Which uh, you pointed out before, David, there's been far worse things happen. That she's totally forgetting about um, um, World War One, World War Two, Pearl Harbor. Um, yeah. Yeah, even like this was the day before September 11th. Yep, and just totally ignored that. Um, now, now, forgive me for getting a little bit, what do you call it, speculative here, but I personally believe this was a deliberate ploy of hers bringing this up because I've been reading reports that even if Trump gets elected, they're going to use January 6th as a means to make sure that he'll never actually set foot in the White House. Um, do you think those sort of claims have any validity? Well, look, because most of these charges are federal charges, at 12.01 and 15 seconds, he can pardon himself before they do anything. So, you know, knowing if they're coming, all he has to do is write himself a pardon and, uh, and have it right there underneath the Bible when he swears, then sign it, and he's and he's absolved of all of the the things. So you know, but they lied about it. You know, we now have video of uh, from Nancy Pelosi saying that she needs to take responsibility, and they don't mention that he offered ten thousand National Guard troops to make sure everything was okay, but Nancy turned them down. And she's talking about how she wanted this. She was waiting on it. And so, and then she talked to, the, and then Kamala talked about there were police officers died on that day, killed, you know, which is false. The The one police officer that, that died, died of natural causes, not from any violence, not from anything that was pret- uh, perpetrated by the January 6th people walking through and looking at the Capitol, but 
you know, they their father is the devil and the father of lies. Mm. She knew how to lie smoother than any person I probably know. <laughs> you know, and some people say she had an earring there that was uh, audio uh, and somebody was speaking into her head. Well, if if Trump decides to do another one, they need to have somebody there for uh, monitoring all frequencies and make sure she is, and then they could catch her out. But they they lied. To, she lied. There's so many more lies. One guy said he counted to 120, but I I, oh, wow. I don't really know about. I only yeah, know about yeah. 20 of them, you know. So that that's I got tired of counting after watching this that been, thing. This has been part of their administration. Biden yeah. has lied so many times. It, it it just makes me angry to even listen to the guy. I end up shouting at my television. You know, yeah. come on. So, yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but I am so tired of lies. Obvious lies. You know? You don't yeah. even have to fact check it. You already know the guy's lying. Yeah, it's been you repeated know? so many times. Uh, they That's what they think, though, and they... They actually have a right for a certain group of people. The more they yeah. lie about it, the more people think it's the truth. And, you know, because yeah. they're not checking, they don't have any discernment whatsoever, which, of course, is yeah. one of the things as believers we are to cultivate. We are to have discernment. Yes. yes. Well, if you want to plug the, uh, the earring piece of from like David Axelrod or Barack Obama, you would still have Satan whispering in her ear. So I don't know. <laughs> you, know you, you choose a very valid want. point, Jake. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I must admit, look, I agree with you, Sandy. Look, I tried to watch the debate. I, I managed to last 60 of the 90 minutes. And I look, I was just getting angry at the moment. At, yeah. At the moment. And I was actually starting to you yell at the TV and that kind of thing. So I kind of thought, look, I turned it off and I was so thankful. I had a brother from Tasmania call me at the time and he helped kind of calm me down. <laughs> it helps, doesn't it? But yeah. 120 lies. It was only a 90 minute, uh, only a 90 minute thing. And she wasn't talking that whole 90 minutes. So that's more than one lie a minute. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to say that this is what the guy said. I have 120, but I, you know, but the main 20 something I, remember are are pretty bad you know yep well just outright lies yep yep, yep. I mean, there, you was know, the joke was, there was a joke when i was young uh how did, can you tell when bill clinton's lying he's opening <laughs> his mouth and it's moving well <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a funny thing when reality re resembles a joke yep biden has outdone them all he's outdone them all you know uh the most lie, lying president, of course, if we get Kamala, you know, we'll, we'll have the same thing. They've, they've, fi they've, they've figured out that they can just lie. Nobody ever, nobody holds them, you know, to, to task, you know, yep. uh, the media certainly doesn't. And they so do. they can just lie, you know, they can have the most blatantly ridiculous lies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yep. And people believe it, apparently. I don't understand how you can even believe it. I guess the good thing is that one day, look, they will stand before the Lord, and I'll have to yes. give it account for every idle word they speak. So um, I would not want to be in their shoes. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. You know one lie that really bothered me, too? Remember when she said there is not one member of the United States military in active duty combat zone? <laughs> how callous of a statement we have several a thousand i know in one place there, there's like there's some in syria there's some in afghanistan there's i think there and there's ten thousand on the border in uh poland where now poland is not a combat zone mm -hmm. yet but what's coming it could be but mm -hmm. we've got we've got several thousand in Several thousand in combat zones right now, Syria and Afghanistan. I think a thousands in Afghanistan. And and all so, the ships over there, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. That, that, that's right. Aircraft carriers over there. Yeah. They're yeah. in harm's way. Yep. Yeah. I, 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 I doubt that there's not some in Ukraine. 
that are in an active war zone. I'm sure. I, yeah, I, I know I'm they're sincerely doubt we know that. they have them in Iraq. You know, it's, come on. Yeah, that is that was callous. Was just and they're attacked by uh, Iran-backed um, militias. So yeah, exactly. Know. That's how we know they're there. Yeah, Actually, wasn't wasn't there an attack from uh, Hezbollah onto an American base just a few, a yeah. few months ago? In Not too Syria. long ago. Yes. In hmm. Syria, in Iraq, I, I shouldn't have said Afghanistan. I should have said Iraq. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing. I, I, and this is where <clears throat> actions speak louder than words. You know, when you look at the government's policies, their actions, <clears throat> that, that should speak volumes to the American people. So, look, I hope people do vote wisely and prayerfully. Uh, this coming election, because uh, I, I think, look, the whole free world will be looking to the outcome of this election. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to get your thoughts during, I actually, I think it was last Friday, a week ago today, um, Ben Carson was appointed as uh, faith chairman for the Trump campaign. Uh, Donald Trump called him a man of unwavering faith. And he, that he's the perfect person to work with leaders of the faith community on behalf of the campaign to promote and protect uh, religious freedoms and prosperity in our country. Uh, he's, he, he went on to say Kamala Harris and the radical left have waged war on America's faith community since the day they took office. And her selection of Tim Waltz's vice president nominee solidifies her commitment to intensifying those effort, efforts. Yeah. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, um, Ben Carson being appointed to this position? Well, well, look, I like Dr. Carson. I think he's a strongly moral man. I think he's a good man. I think he's a brilliant surgeon. My mother actually worked with him at the Baptist hospital when he separated those twins joined at the skull. Uh, so but I believe he's, a, if I, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he's a Seventh day Adventist. And also, Trump has a problem now with evangelical Christians because of his abortion stance and because of the uh, LB, uh, the homosexual movement, and some other things. And so people like Albert Mueller have told him such that he's at risk and plus when he does surround himself last time he was had put him surrounded himself with a lot of false teacher including paula white while i like like i said i like ben carson but he's going to need evangelical votes if he's going to be list uh president but i think a lot of evangelicals including jacob are struggling with the their uh their ability to vote for him because of his changing abortion stand so he he i think well i, I and the, what i prayed the other night about him is that i prayed that god that god would help him turn back to him and get to know him we do know he acknowledged god but i was in meltdown and so i he's he he, if he was protected there on the stage, nearly assassinated, that, you know, I would just say that uh, may God help him and may God give him the truth and know and come yeah. to know it. Obviously, then I mean, be useful. we can't expect leaders to always be born again Christians. It's just not going to happen. That's right. But the Lord does use people who mm -hmm. actually. Sometimes he will allow a leader to go in who is uh, upstanding morally and um, will fight for uh, the rights of uh, Christians to, uh, you know, uh, continue to worship as they as the Lord leads them and things like that. So really the choice, is, there really is no choice at this point. <laughs> you you got you to vote for Trump. You can't vote for these communists, you know. Uh, Trump is not a communist. So I've just been praying that the Lord will uh, allow him to become president, especially so that there'll be somebody who can stand up for Israel. 
Yep. You know, we need somebody in there who's going to actually stand behind Israel and not be talking about two state solution, which is absolutely ridiculous, can never happen. And, uh, you know, and somebody who is going to supply the arms that the, the, that the Congress has, as you know, uh, decided to give them and things like that. That's the kind of person we need. So, yeah, it's a vote between the lesser of two evils. But I wouldn't say that, that Trump is evil. I would say he's a he's a good guy. He he is not a born again Christian. He has surrounded himself with some people who, you know, are, are not good counselors. But right. uh, by and large, when we we know him by his record, and he did a good job. He yeah. is probably the best president the United States has ever had, except for you know uh, a few others in the past. But yeah, uh, you know he's he. He is, he's been a good president. He will continue if he continues in that. He's not going to take over the world. He's not going to become a dictator, you know, like they've said about him. It's they who want to be the dictators. So, that's right. You know, that's my attitude about it is that, you know, we, we just can't expect that everybody that goes in there is going to be somebody who's born again. It would, that would be wonderful. But yeah. I mean, it's just to, not to your point, happen. Sandy. Name one, name one born again Christian that made it in. Uh, uh, I I really can't. I don't know. I got to go back in be. history and get Joseph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, most most American presidents have not been born again. Let let let's let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, 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 uh, but yet God used Darius uh, to, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, a Gentile. Exactly. Yeah, because he was a, a man who had some moral principles. And, yes. You know, that's that's what we want, and we hope that that's what the, the Lord will allow. Now, on the other hand, though, we have to be prepared that maybe the Lord is going to start wrapping things up here. Yeah. And if he may allow Kamala Harris to get in there, and that's going to be the downward spiral that takes us into the tribulation. I don't know. I don't yeah. want that, you know, because I, I always pray for Israel and pray for their safety and pray for the American people and all that, that, you know, but I'm afraid that pretty soon here, the Lord's judgment is coming down. And yeah. especially on America, I, I hate to say. Yeah, I would say the whole world there, um, Sandy, you know, I too have uh, believed this. You know, look, I remember Trump was very pro-Israel. He moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He was very pro-Christian and stopping persecution of Christians around the world. He did a lot yeah. of righteous things for yep. Christians and for Christianity. And I think that if he got in, he would do the same. You know, yes. it maybe even bring some of our hot, our uh, left behinds in Afghanistan home. And I believe that he would help arm Israel, too. Yes. But like you say, it very well he could be wrapping it up because, look, we know that the whole world is still worshiping Moloch. Through a oh, absolutely, yeah. We know the impurity and the sexual revolution that started in our generation that is now not only warped from man to girl, but to all sorts of deviations, and that we have going on here. And that cup of wrath is filling up. Yes. And one day, as we know, just if you go back and read Lamentations. You understand, you understand that he allowed that to come on his people for Jerusalem to be destroyed and for yes. his temple to be destroyed because he would rather, you know, it be destroyed than to misuse and disgrace his name. And That's we're right. getting, we're getting this to that point here in this world at this time. We're losing our freedoms. We're seeing all these things going away that the gospel gives us. And yes. and you're right. If if this is the time the Lord is going to allow this, 
People better be willing to be a Jeremiah. Go read yeah. what he went through. Yep. What he had to experience. Are you willing to stand up and to be able to do that? To yes. share in the sufferings of Christ. You know, and you've got your right, your life right, because why does God allow this to come on us? Is because this persecution, these problems God allows to come upon his people is because he wants us to have a chance to repent and to right. to 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 draw us back to righteousness, you know, and he allows these things to happen to us. And then if I remember right, Hebrews twelve, one through about thirteen kind of explains that, that he allows these bad things to come upon us so that we have time to repent and time to make ourselves right, even in the worst of times. And it's for yep. our own good. Well, I I believe so firmly, which is why I wrote the book on, uh, on um, the letters to the church, I called it, letter to the church, letters to the church, um, that those churches in revelation it was not only written to the actual churches of the time but i believe especially those letters are to the end times church because we have a lot to overcome just like they did and we will have to be overcomers and we can't lose our faith because of these people we can't That's give right. up we can't you know uh chicken out we are gonna have to make a stand for what's right, because who's left? We're supposed to be light and salt. And so, you know, we have got to do what the Lord wants us to do. And in some cases, it's going to take some courage, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I believe we can do it. There's a remnant left. Uh, unfortunately, most of the church is in apostasy right now. But yeah. there are a, rem a remnant church. There is a remnant church left. The Lord will always have his church. And uh, we need to be there to stand up for him. Yeah. I was praying for that yesterday about God, for your people, for your people that are still here yes. and going through this, Lord, please help Mr. Trump. He did all, I, all those things I said a few minutes ago. I reminded the Lord, not that he needed reminding, but, you know, I wanted him to know that we still have time. We have unsaved loved ones that we're concerned about. Yes. Family, you know, I, I I get so many parents crying, saying their children are not in the faith, and they need a little bit more time. And so, Lord, for the sake yes. of your elect, for the sake of those that know you yes. and will be with you in eternity, let us still have I'm, some time. And if I'm very use, proud of strong. some of the people who are in our Zoom Bible studies because they are witnessing to their family members. And in some cases, there have been people who have made a profession of faith, and so yeah. I'm I'm just really proud of them to do that. Now is the time to do it. You gotta gotta go after your kids. You gotta go after your husband and wife and relatives and everybody. You know, it's it's your job in the family if your family's unsaved to get in there. Um, one one of the big problems, and I'm glad that they're thinking about trying to figure out a way to address it in some states is to stop allowing these kids to have, uh, you know, uh, their phones in schools because those things are absolutely corrupting our youth, you know, through TikTok and, and all this stuff is some of the most corrupting material I've ever seen. I don't even look at it because it's so bad. But according to my granddaughter, they talk about it all the time. There's these little kids, and they're talking about this stuff that they see on those sites. And yeah. so they need to, you know, they need to clamp down on that, take away that stuff from these kids, because it's absolutely corrupting a whole generation. Yep. Uh, several generations now, Sandy. Several. Yep. Several generations, right. Yep. China, they don't let those kids have phones in them classrooms. Nope. They just, you know. And that's one of the reasons, you know, they their test scores are so much higher than oh, yeah. most of the rest of the world. In fact, the U.S. test scores are in the toilet. They're they're horrible. 
You know, these kids, I don't know what they're doing. They're fooling around, you know? They're being, they're being taught. My sister is a five-star math teacher, and she says that math in the United States in public schools is common core. And she says that stuff doesn't teach you how to do math, that you you got to use these boxes right. and lines and everything. Right. Instead of adding nine and three and getting 12, you got to write down these lines and stuff, and it makes it so yeah. complicated and it take you so long. You used to have to do that in your head in the fourth grade, third yeah. grade for me. Um, I, I remember real clearly when a lot of these uh, bad uh, education ideas came in, which was right around the time when, my wife was going to school, so it's, it goes back that far. Yeah, and she did not. She didn't learn geography. She didn't learn history. She, you know, the the, the math thing was was off. You know, it was a new math, and uh, they they ruined the education system. You know, absolutely. Well, I think America should take do away with the Department of Education, return education to the states, and amen. if the if the blue states want to go and teach uh, these health classes and then the other LBGQ and gender identity stuff, I believe the red states will produce schools that will teach STEM, help people become MDs, DDMs, and right. uh, CPAs, etc. And, you know, I, I'm sorry for places like Baltimore who... 67% of the kids in the Baltimore school system are illiterate. Yeah. And, and across, nationwide, uh, the recent testing shows that on average across America, 37% of Americans' kids in the third grade are not literate at that right. age. It's, it's horrible. Well, you know, I remember by the fourth grade, we had to memorize uh, – uh, our times tables till 12. Mrs. Trachtenberg. Yeah, I remember. Her. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here in Australia, they are actually going to introduce a social media ban for children under under 16. You won't be able to access social media sites now unless you can verify your ID. Uh, they say it's for the protection of our children, but really... It's not a, for, for the protection of our children, especially when our uh, prime minister just nominated one of the most perverse, <laughs> sexually deviant books you could think of for school kids at the moment. Yeah. Uh, nominated that for award. It's definitely not about protecting kids. Basically, this is a stepping stone to the digital ID, to abolishing yep. VPNs here, and it's a it's a of it's course. a step to total control, so that your kids will now belong to the government. Of it, course, that's what they want. Way. But yep. um, yeah, getting back to what you were saying too, I, uh, I'm thinking, you know, like judgment begins at the house of God and that kind of thing. And that's just right. sort of what we're seeing going on with the clergy at the moment. Because with that poll that came out during the week, um, trust in clergy is dropping too, and it's down to a new low of 32%. Well, 32% yeah. is certainly a lot better than, you know, politicians and all the rest of it. But it's dropped 8% yeah. in the last five years. Sure. Um, only those in the medical profession and the police have had a higher drop um, during that time period. But I guess, look, it's no surprise when you've got um, clergy totally abandoning the word of God or compromising to make, you know, fellowship or friendship with the world. Um you know, the majority are no longer standing for anything, really. You know, they've just become a, just as woke a, as the world, yeah. you know. So, um, they're going from bad to worse. Um, you know, Sandy, I believe you've got some examples. Yeah, you know, I, I keep track of this on my website on, on deception in the church.com. So, if you come there, you'll see articles. I update every day, I, I put a new article up there, uh, on this kind of stuff. You know, over the years, I, I've found that. Word of Faith and Latter Rain Antichrists, and that's what I call them because they all think they're little gods, have tried to convince people they are God in order to turn these people into a cult and a ready resource for sexual perversity. Now, if you think I'm being radical, I'm not because I watch what's going on. 
Um, you know, there are false prophets and false teachers who've fallen into sexual perversion in the past couple of years. If I go back a little bit, I can talk about uh, Mike Bickle of IOP. Uh, they blasted him after multiple minors accused him of sexual abuse. <laughs> and they said it, 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 he had predatory and abusive actions and, they, and that those actions were sick. Wow. That was IHOP. Uh, televangelist Benny Yin's wife has tried to divorce him in the past, and now she's finally tr trying again. <laughs> you know, uh, she's a better, she's a bigger nut job than Benny Yin is, if that's even possible. You know, and case in point, she was shouting at his church some some years ago that anyone who, who is against his heretical teachings and slaying the spirit needed to have a quote Holy Spirit enemy enema right up their rear end. I mean, talk about yeah. blasphemy, this person. Paula White uh, is a new apostolic false teacher. He did, she divorced her former husband, who was a co-pastor with her in her church, uh, City of Destiny in Florida, and married Jonathan Cain from the group Journey. Well, they subsequently got up in front of her church together and told them that if they were having marital problems, that they should watch porn together. And I have the videotape on that. I couldn't even believe what I was hearing when I saw that. And apparently Cain is a co-pastor with her in her church, of all things. I don't think the guy's even born again. Uh, Carl Lentz, uh, the former pastor of Hillsong at the New York City lo location, was removed from ministry by Hillsong's lead uh, pastor, Brian Houston, after he admitted to having an inappropriate relationship, you know, adultery, with another woman. Um, then we have uh, Chris Reed, the CEO of Morningstar, which was uh, Rick Joyner's church. Uh, he resigned after he admitted to sexual misconduct. Uh <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And, of course, if I went back a little further, I've got Todd Bailey, you know, who married his secretary after he had had, they'd had hands laid on them for ministry by the by the head people of the New Apostolic, him and his wife. And, but you know what? There's some more recent stuff. Fugitive preacher wanted by FBI was arrested in the Philippines after fraught standoff between police and supporters. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's name is Apollo Quibbly, uh, and he I have him on one of my videotapes. It's a videotape called um, called uh, the I Am God uh, Blasphemies, and uh, you can find that on the Act TV uh, site on YouTube and also on RTN. But he said this, the official coming, coming of the Son of God was in April 13, 2005. I missed it. Speaking, speaking of himself, <laughs> uh, his church is called the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, and he allegedly has had six million mostly Filipino members in about two hundred countries, including the United States. Six million. Yeah. A two thousand one U.S. indictment accused the 74-year-old preacher and his alleged accomplices of running a sex trafficking ring that coerced girls and young women to have sex with him under threats of eternal damnation for nearly 15 years. He was threatening these girls with eternal damnations if they didn't sleep with him. Wow, that guy's under major problems. Um, yeah. evangelicals for Harris. Do you hear about that one? <laughs> yep. <laughs> they want us to believe that Kamala is a faithful and committed Christian. <laughs> Harris's so-called commitment to justice and equality and compassion, you know, we're expected to believe that her push for unrestricted abortion, her support for defunding the police, and her endorsement of gender, gender confusion are somehow expressions of Christian love. Really? Everything's you know, since, turned upside down, Sandy. Absolutely. Since when did advocating for the slaughter of unborn children become an act of compassion? 
Imagine, if you will, a group of people so detached from reality they've decided Kamala Harris, a politician whose life and career is a veritable checklist of anti-Christian sentiment and policies, is actually a faithful and committed Christian. So you enter Evangelicals for Harris, a group that's apparently dedicated to rewriting history and redefining what it means to follow Christ. Truth this one really this one really bothered me. Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa leader uh, dismissed Israel's present right to their homeland. What? In the latest example of the errors of Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa leadership, Brian Brorson, currently co-pastoring with his son Char Brorson, uh, Char took callers on KWVE radio, and uh, they were talking about this this issue. And uh, he said uh, he answered the phone phone in a question regarding the Jewish people and their right to the biblical homeland. And the original broadcast was over an hour in length, so you know we can't accuse him out of context. The entire section with the caller and Char's uh, response was screen captured by the person writing this article and that you can click on that and read that. And it's unbelievable. But Jacob did a, uh, he did a uh, sermon out in Hawaii in 2000 called a chink in the armor. And he warned Calvary chapel that they were going to go de- right down the tubes. If they kept hanging out with the wrong people. So guess what happened? It's exactly what he said. Yeah. Um, Morning Star. You know, I talked about him. Um, let, let me just let me just uh, finish this up. Yeah. Um, NAR prophetess uh, Katie Souza says she's on assignment to fight a werewolf sent by Satan. Oh boy. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Michael Brown. Joined famed leg lengthening huckster Todd White for joint ministry of a- event. That's not surprising. They're both very much in the same boat. Deliverance Minister Derry Duvall claimed that there are Nephilim li- living in Hollow Earth and that Jonah and the whale used underwater portals to get there. <laughs> well, uh, I guess it doesn't mind. matter that the Bible says that he was swallowed by a fish. Yeah. Um, the Gospel Coalition published an article painting critical theory as biblical and Christian. They've been uh, really going after that, you know. Um, Tim Waltz in Minnesota actually banned Christians from teaching in public schools. You probably didn't know that. Uh, it was, uh, July, it's going to be effective July, t- t- 2025 teacher licensing rules passed last year in Minnesota under Democrat will brand banned practicing Christians, Jews, and Muslims from teaching in public schools. Oh, no religion. um, and finally, I think, is this finally? Yes. Alistair Begg announced his retiring as senior pastor of Parkside Church, he said he's going to be out by the end of the year because he advised the grandmother to attend her grandson's marriage to a transsexually identified person as an act of love. I can't believe that because Alistair Begg used to be a fairly decent, you yeah. know, a, a doctrinally sound preacher. He was a Calvinist, though. Which may yeah. which may uh, explain some things. I've heard Calvinists say some pretty whacked out things before, but I don't understand how you can be basically uh, instituting your own terms of you know uh, basically you know well I'm not going to leave till the end of the year. <laughs> well, he's got a huge ministry bringing in lots of money, you know, and. Uh, so, you know, oops, said the wrong thing. But a lot of these guys are doing that and now. They're saying, oh, you know, if they're homosexual, it's fine. You got to show them love and support what they're doing. Anyway, that's what I add, guys. Well, 
You just reminded me of something too, Sandy, when you mentioned the Gospel Coalition. I think I read the other day, I, I was just looking it up to try and get the facts again. I think it was Ryan Kwan. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he's a member of the Gospel Coalition, yeah. Coalition, pastor of Resonant Movement Church. But he came out a uh, weekend before last saying, linking Jesus' sacrificial, sacrificial death with the need for Christians to surrender their rights. So basically, according to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, Kwan laying down your Second Amendment rights or your wealth um, is, yeah, basically something we should do, you know. It's like uh, akin to Christ's sacrificial death. Uh, well, they, you know, they believe that if you're not fighting for every political cause that you're you're not filling the great you're not fulfilling the great commission they yeah. have no idea what the great commission is anymore oh, they, they, true. People. And jesus couldn't make it much clearer could he <laughs> go and make disciples all nations you know it was fairly simple yeah. Yeah. it's preach the gospel and make disciples in all, all the nations and it's as simple as that it's not difficult you know but they've got to. Most of those guys are are liberals, extreme liberals in Christianity, and they basically, since they've left the gospel behind, then they have to have a new cause. And the new cause is social justice, etc. Well, David, you mentioned before something about the upside down kingdom. Well, they actually do now have their own Bible. It's kind of like this past week. Just saw the release of a new study Bible. Well, I can't even really call it a Bible because it's not, but that's what they're calling it. And it's called the Upside Down Kingdom Bible. And it was assembled <laughs> by Preston Sprinkle and other contributors. Ah, included... Sprinkle. <laughs> yeah. And other contributors included Derwin Gray, Rebecca McLaughlin, Michael Bird, Lynn Kohick, Francis Chan, Rachel Gilson, Jamar Tisby, Greg Coles. Ron Sider and John and Lisa Bevere. They were oh, of course, the Beveres. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Yep. And uh, they've been around a long time there. Yes. Yeah, the, yep. And I'm I always on the wrong so side of the gospel. Yeah. Uh, I had so people, so, so, um, so many people angry with me when I wrote my first article about John Bevere. I, I showed that he was teaching word of faith doctrine. Oh, he's not, you know, he's a wonderful guy. So no, he's that's what he's teaching, and here's the quotes. You know, they wouldn't believe me. Yep. Yeah. Well, this Bible well, is really not a Bible. It's more like a, um, what do you call it? A guidebook to social right. um, activism. So it's you know dealing yeah. with social, cultural, and political issues. Um, but yeah, social activism handbook. You know, LGBTQ plus affirming. It's pro-abortion. You know. Uh, I just saw what they did with Genesis 1-1, and that was it. I kind of had to walk away from the article. Um, mm -hmm. they've, what, what they do with Genesis 1-1, they basically say that means now, in the beginning, God created. So that means in the beginning, God created wokeness. I got that far, and that was it. Right. I was, I'm right. done. Yeah. Seriously. Right. Yep. Yeah, they, you, know, you know, they're saying you know, God created homosexuality and all that kind of stuff. And my, my response to that is he didn't create that. When man sinned, that came in as a as a response to sin. Yep. Inspired by Satan to defile and make man exactly. impure. You know, and and all this stuff comes from impurity from Satan and his yeah. and his angels, you know, that yep. they bring this in. But but social activism this fits with the current age because now you can do their preaching this and so they'll get a lot of adherence to uh you can be active for the lbtq active active in this other thing but one of my heroes of the civil rights movement used to say social justice is a slap in the face of citizenship you know as as a person in America, and I want every American to have all their rights. 
but I don't want to have unequal rights. Some are more equal right. than others. And that's what's that's happening. Right. And this is where social yes. justice gets people off. But we have so many that want to be active that are buying into this lie. And so this is the book for them. Jacob did a teaching on bad Bibles uh, some time back. It's titled oh, The yeah. Plastic Bible. The yeah. Plastic Bible. And you can yeah. understand what uh, uh, this more theologically in-depth, if you want to, if not just the, that one, but all the other ones that it's are appearing good. on our scene now. Yeah. It all really comes back down to, you know, in Genesis 3, 1, where it said, you know, hath God said, you know, uh, and then basically doing the same thing, playing semantic games with God's word. Um, another one that is doing that at the moment, and he gets a bit more of a pass with a lot of people, um, and that, but it's only because of his so-called intellect, which I would disagree with anyhow, but it's that of empty right. N.T. Wright has just recently said, Americans' defense of gun rights is inconsistent with their defense of the unborn because they are too polarized by social media. They accept oversimplified arguments to, um, to fall in line with a particular leader. They can't handle nuance. And ultimately, they, and this is where his arrogant pride comes out, they just aren't an educated electorate. He has this yeah. intellectual arrogance, which he flaunts, and, and this air of superiority, which he has over others. But for, he goes on further. He, he says that he thinks a, sub, a substantial element of the pro-life movement is just people nervous about sex who get manipulated by powerful men telling women what they can and can't do. So, um, look, I've you never know, liked N.T. Wright. I, I found him you know, a, an absolutely horrid person. You know, he's whole new... But, Perspectives on Paul is just. <clears throat> Davey, you know, uh, Christians want abortions to stop because we believe that from the moment of conception, that is a human life. A human zygote becomes a human embryo that becomes a human fetus that becomes a human uh, infant that becomes a human baby that becomes a human adolescent that becomes a human adult. At all times, it's human. So we want to protect this baby, this human, even though it's small, it's out of sight, we want to support it, and we want it to see and come into life. But at the other time, with a gun right, they're used a lot of times, millions of times each year to protect viable life. So I don't see how that could be at cross purposes because many, many guns are used in self-defense. Now, it is true guns can be used for evil, but that's the world we live in. But millions of people save their lives and save other people's lives with guns. He's absolutely wrong on this, and I would be glad to debate him yeah, on well, this subject. It's, on the right you know, it's not the guns that are evil. It's that's the right. people who use them in an evil way and yeah. there needs to be education on that but um guns are used for hunting and all kinds of purposes legitimate purposes yeah. but your actually what's actually behind all that is that the government does not want the people to have guns they're That's afraid right. that the people are going to rise up and uh defend their rights like they like yeah. they've done in the past and uh, they're they're scared to death of that, and that's why these Democrats want to take away everybody's guns. Yep, they started gun control to make sure freed slaves did not have a gun. That's right. They sent their justice arm, the KKK, to take care of them and take them out. So that's where the first gun laws start with yeah. Democrats. That they're still yep. trying to persecute that. But now they do the killing of blacks in abortion clinics. But many, many blacks are waking up to this. They're, they, many blacks are now saying that they see themselves being victimized by the Democrats 
and have yeah. felt that they are now being replaced, not by yeah. other black men, but brown men, by the yeah. Hispanics. And they have no use for them anymore. So uh, I hope they do wake fire up even more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, look, I totally <clears throat> agree with you both. You know, guns don't kill people. People kill people. It's it's the same. Always remember that uh, Disney cartoon from the 1950s. Um, I think it was called Anytown, USA, where they put the car on trial, you know, because the car was killing people. But it wasn't yeah. the car, it was the drivers, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, the same, yeah. it's the same thing here. Um, you know, Davey? They, did you know that uh, America, that in the world they they believe that there's one billion guns? America own Americans own five hundred million of them. Well, well, they took away our guns here after the Port Arthur massacre back in 1995, and now uh, now we have <laughs> now you're at their disposal. Yeah, well, uh, and it's kind of like they say, "What do you mean you have the knife attacks and the machete attacks?" And the, yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, now you can't defend thing. yourself. Yeah, t- totally. That scene in um, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, where the <laughs> the arrow yeah. guy comes out waving the sword around, and the other judge pulls out the gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, in- <laughs> the interesting part uh, for me is, you know, having grown up in the island of Palau, uh, <clears throat> after there was an attempted uh, assassination of the president. They banned all guns on Palau, but I, you know, having grown up there and knowing all, knowing everybody, <laughs> they they didn't get rid of their guns. They just hit them, yep. hit them out, hit them out in the jungle somewhere, and so then when they needed it, they go get it, you know, and then hide it again. It doesn't actually work to do that. You know what I'm saying? No, never, never does. Yep. So. You know, there was a case in the Philippines where one Japanese, there was two Japanese soldiers originally, for 40 years, carried, continued to carry on World War II yes. in, the, in a Philippine region. Same thing in Guam, yeah. too. If two, if two Japanese soldiers with a gun can invade the government authorities and terrorize a region, that is the power of being able to protect yourself with a firearm. That's right. Yep. And that's why they have to get rid of guns in people's hands. Because first of all, we, we don't even talk about this, but there is a, I mean, there is obviously a, a connection, at least in the past, we have a direct connection between criminals and governmental officials. How far are we removed from from a time when those two will walk hand in hand to make sure the populace is in check? They they used they used thugs to terrorize citizens so that the citizens would be in line. How, how close are we from that again? Yeah. Well, Antifa, Black Lives Matter, a couple subgroups, you know, supported yeah. by the government, allowed to roam. Wild, you know. I mean, we could talk about the human trafficking. Uh, yeah, that goes that goes on with the government's assent. The government is is it totally at least this administration is totally fine with with child trafficking and and people well, coming across the border and being sold into slavery. We have no idea where a lot of those children are that came across unaccompanied. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. Probably a large percentage of them went into the sex trafficking trade, you know, because it's very big here in the United States. We had eight people, eight men arrested in Memphis, Tennessee. I met a woman that was part of that was help ministering to the women afterwards. Uh, one in Jackson, Tennessee, which is a country little town right down the road from me and Nashville, this is just one state. They're everywhere. They're trafficking these kids. Remember, Trump stopped it when he said that this man brings these two children across. Well, they have to DNA test them. Yes. And if he didn't have the right DNA, he could not get them kids. 
But then that's when the Democrats screamed, oh, he's imprisoning these kids. He's holding them hostage. He's treating them so badly. Now they just let these gangs take these children across the United States, prostitute them, treat them like human garbage. And 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 they're supporting this. And and if this 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 liberal thinking, they think, oh no, that's not us. That's that's the Republicans that are doing that's always been them. That's always been them. It's always been that's that's that's, 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 it's been the party of slavery since 1862, and nothing has changed. Yeah. They enslaved the Japanese, they enslaved the Germans, they they tried to do genocide on the American Indians. These were all Democrats. They've done they, this. They forever. sent the Jews now back to be just, killed. When know, they came they, over they, in the St. Louis, they sent them yeah. right back and said, nope. Nope, can't come here. So that's, and now it's all these governments are doing this. You know, Lord help us. Come quickly. Yes. Amen. Amen. I can't help but think of, you know, where it says in Revelation 18, and I was just looking up the verses. I think it's um, 11 and 12. Oh, and 13, yes, is the one I'm looking for. You know, and and the merchants of the earth weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, yeah. silver, and precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every article ivory, of ivory, and every co- article made from valuable wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, perfume, frankincense, wine, oil, flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, and cargo of horses, carriages, and this is the part I really wanted to get to, slaves and human lives. The, tra- yes. the child trafficking thing is kind of like, I, I, every time I read that verse, I can't help but thinking of the child trafficking, and it's it's unbelievable just to the degree it goes on. Um, and we don't really know the half of it. We don't even know, you know, probably in no. fifth of it, really. It's um, absolutely um, horrendous. The stench of our sins is reaching heaven, and it's helping the cup of wrath to fill up. But one day, That's it's going to be poured out. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Actually, we thank, thank the Lord for that. Uh, one other um Pastor, I wanted to just bring up too, who's kind of doing harm to the name, you know, damage to the body of the Christ in general is that of Stephen Anderson. Um, <laughs> just recently, you know, wide range. <laughs> <right, yeah. laughs> Don't blame me shaking your head, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically, so far, two of um, Stephen Anderson's children have come out basically speaking out about the abuse they uh, suffered at the hands of him, the abuse their mother suffered, plus also the abuse they suffered from their mother. A third child is probably going to come out within the next day. But they were, you know, the look, the, uh, their accounts of the abuse was pretty bad, you know, being whipped by a cord, um, being, you know, pounded on the ground, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's pretty bad, but you know what kind of a testimony and witness is this? You know, and we'll, you know, it's kind of like what Jesus tells them. You know, you'll know that you'll know us by our fruit. You know, what kind of fruit yeah. is this? You know, and look how much harm is this doing to the body of Christ? You know, and I and Sandy you and David Jay, I wanted to get you to comment. You know, what do you think? What's the relationship between bad doctrine and bad behavior? Well, I can, you can be very direct. Very direct. There's once you go off on doctrine, you and you leave the teachings of Christ, that opens up that teacher, that person, to all sorts of evils. Because now there's no moral restraint, there's no restraint on honor, there's no restraint on anything that of Christian values. Because now you have the opposite. Now you have the father of lies instructing you. And everything is open to you. This is why. And that was just a short list of of all the bad teachers that uh, Sandy had today. And I, I encourage everybody. Sandy has a 25 plus year history 
of bad teachers and bad. If you need any information, go to Deception in the Church. He's got a fantastic website, and uh, he's done a great job. I've known him longer than I've known uh, Jacob, and uh, good man. And he's got some good stuff and a, a resource that you you guys need false teachings and know what people teach. You'll probably find it there, you know. So I encourage people to make use of of Sandy's website, deceptioninthechurch.com. And uh, but what happens once you break away from the teachings of Jesus, you're open to anything. Yeah, and uh, right. so that's what we're seeing today. We're we're seeing people yeah. who have gotten away from true biblical teaching, particularly the core doctrines. Um, and, uh, they end up going, going down a sewer hole. And, uh, I, I just want to especially warn people against Stephen Furtick. I was watching yes. him on TV the other day on TBN. That guy is awful. And, uh, <laughs> and also the music that they're pumping out of that church elevation is just being played everywhere in all these churches. Mm. Why are you playing it's his a music? Call. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, it's called "Don't Play Elevation and Bethel and Hillsong Music in Your Church," because it's got false doctrine all through it, you know, and uh, yeah. you're just teaching people, you know, in a you know, it's even stronger than through a message. I mean, people people can remember a melody, and then the words are there, and then pretty soon they know what the words are, and uh, it can really brainwash people. And Sandy, yeah, did you want to do a big teaching just... on music? Yes. Sandy, did you I've do got... a big teaching? Can you tell yeah, people got... where that's at? Yeah, I've got three three DVDs on that. It's, it's up on my uh, – you can access it for free on – Act TV on YouTube and also Act TV on RTN. It's called Testing Music in the Church. And I go through a number of music. It's been a while now since I've done an update. I could just do, you know, <laughs> endless <laughs> updates on that stuff. But um, it just gives, uh, it shows you how to test music to make sure that it's appropriate for your church. Because people will, a lot of pastors will just kind of hand over the music ministry to somebody and they don't really check to see what they're actually, actually uh, doing. And then pretty soon you got these songs in your church and you go, what? Wait, wait a minute. You know, if you're, if there's anybody who's discerning there, but unfortunately a lot of people aren't discerning about music. They just go along with it. If it sounds good, if it's got a good rhythm, you know, got a good melody. Woo. You know, I can raise my hands and act like I'm worshiping the Lord. I was reading yeah. something by a lady who said that she was very distressed that her children think that uh, the music time in their church is worship. That's when they're worshiping the Lord. <laughs> and she was distressed because she had to kind of straighten them out. That is, yeah, that can be worship, but it's not the definition of bi biblical worship. Biblical worship is when you obey the Lord and do what he wants you to do, you know? That's worship, but it's, it's been redefined, you know, into something that it's not. So, you know, check check out those um, three. Uh, there's a three part thing on that subject. Right. Actually, just you know, you know, something uh, Jacob said recently about um, music, um, and I think it was in when he was doing Daniel chapter two. Um, the music was the call. Cool, to bow down and worship the image. Right. Yeah. Sorry, Jay. I, I, I was just going to say, this brings up a much bigger problem that is going on in church. First of all, I think there's an over-reliance on, on pastors to be uh, basically the ones that are thinking and, and studying on behalf of their congregations. I think when we look at what the church was supposed to be, especially when we look at Philippians, it talks about electing a leader to be the first among equals. Equals mean 
that you need to be educating and becoming a teacher and being able to disciple yourself. And when a pastor who is just a man decides to go off from what true doctrine is, as a Christian brother, it's your duty to not only know the doctrine, and I and I mean this, but to go on and, and tell them, you're, you're going off right. and this is not correct. You have to have accountability structure in a church. And the biggest problem I see is we have people that turn their brain off when they sit in that pew and just accept everything that's coming from there. That's right. And this has been part of the problem with, for instance, there are a number of false doctrinal systems entering the churches these days. But one an example, which is people don't catch, is, is five-point Calvinism. It's just come, you know, people just turn their brains off and accept what these Calvinists are saying instead of checking their Bible to make sure that, you know, uh, it actually teaches those things. And so p- people end up being Calvinists without even kind of knowing it because they're just accepting it. And their pastor is going, oh, you need to read uh, John MacArthur and, uh, you know, R.C. Sproul and, you know, recommending their books and stuff. It's like, do yeah. you know, I, I told the pastor at the former church I used to go to, I had a number of discussions with him. And I said, you know, you're recommending R.C. Sproul to people. Do you realize where that guy's coming from? He's a preterist. And number two, he's a cessationist. Do you agree with those things? Um, you know, yeah, he's written a few good things, but you better be careful because it's all spiced with hardcore Calvinism. Well, why would somebody not want to, uh, what are the two or three major areas with Calvinism there, Sandy? That somebody well, should know. Well, uh, one of the big ones is that they believe that God predestined people to heaven. And then that implies that he, he also predestined people to hell. And the hardcore ones will say, will actually say that. Yeah. He predestined people to heaven and hell. That goes completely against what the Bible says that he's not willing that any should perish. That that's how that's, that's our Lord. That's the Lord. I, I worship. Um, but what they do is then they take, um, Romans eight, uh, you know, uh, what, are, what are we predestined to there? What are we predestined to, Sandy? Well, of course, it says predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. That's what that's what it actually is. And if somebody's but, predestined to be conformed, does that mean they're going to hell? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. But the problem is they skip over the key to the, the progression that we see in um uh, uh Romans 8:30 which is which is for new predestined called justified glorified i have no problem teaching that but you've got to start with the key which is god's omniscience he foreknew they and they'll say oh no that means he foreordained no it doesn't mean that it means that he in his omniscience, he knew if someone would actually believe in him and actually be saved. He's the, actually he's the only one who knows for sure at this point. But, you know, he foreknew that. Thus, it goes on to the next step. Then he predestined that person. He called them. He, he justified it and glorified them. It's, but if you leave out foreknew, that's what you have is Calvinism which is absolutely wrong. And then they also say that you cannot you cannot refuse the Lord. You once see once see uh you know whatever you you can't decide against him. I know a lot of people who were Christians for a long time and then they decided against him and they haven't returned. You know, we can walk away from the Lord. And You're it's one of the grace. Absolutely. That's what it is. It's called irresistible grace. And uh, that's it's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. In fact, it teaches that you better hold on all the way to the end. First, so they, don't teach. they don't teach that part. They also cannot teach uh, verses like Romans 11, 22, which says, you know what? I cut off the Israel for 
for sinning against me. And you know what? I can cut you off too. That's what the Bible verse basically says. He's talking about the Gentiles. Uh-oh. Yeah, God can cut people off. He can also he also goes after people who have wandered and tries to bring them back. And if they've really been born again, they're going to come back. But if they haven't and they've been pretending to be a Christian, hey, I I know I was born again when I was 6 years old. And I walked away when I was in my early 20s for a couple of years, and I walked way far away. I didn't even believe God existed at that time. But the Lord came after me, and his Holy Spirit worked in in my spirit, and he brought me back. And I was so thankful that he loved me enough to bring me back, and, and he came after me like a wandering sheep. But... Uh, <laughs> They just don't, they can't wander away. Oh, we can't be deceived. Christians can't be deceived. Oh, really? He he warned the uh, the disciples themselves that they could be deceived. And guess what? They almost were. If it weren't for Paul and Titus, we'd have a different Christianity today. They were going back into works, you know, back into trying to get people to come under the law again. And uh, thankfully for Paul, he came in and reminded them, and they remembered what the Lord had taught, and then they they forsook that idea. But, yep. you know, if they could be deceived, we can. And especially today, there are people out there with just wacky ideas that can really fool you. You know, I listen to some of these guys, you know, Jonathan Kahn and other people. You better be careful about them. They 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 can really twist things around to make them sound legitimate. Um, yeah. But we've got to guard our salvation. We've got to make sure that we keep our salvation, that we hold on to it. Yes. And it always says, hold on till the end. You just uh, reminded me about one of the craziest things I think I've ever heard Andy uh, Woods says, and there's quite a number of them. But that one where he says, basically, Look, look, as long as you've believed once, you can go into sin, immorality, all the rest of it. You can have yeah. a post-Christian life. That's his yeah. purpose. Um, and then when the rapture comes, yeah. um, you'll you'll go up kicking and screaming. You're going to go or not? It's kind of like you'll be all yeah. set. Yep. I I heard yeah. Charles Stanley, his father, say on a ra- on a radio program. This lady called in and she said, "I'm a Christian, but I I'm going to commit suicide." Uh, will I still go to heaven? <laughs> and he said, yes, you will. Uh, and that's by the way, I just realized how bad Calvinism really is. Go ahead, James. Sorry, I just wanted to add uh, to what you're saying, Davey. Many people, if you have not watched it, you should watch. We did two documentaries on Andy Wood where he said it. We've been accused uh, many times in comments that he didn't say that. But what Davey just said in his own words, is documented on Morial TV. Yeah. And we'll make sure that there are connections to that in the yeah. final video. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Thank um, you. Sorry. Hey, I, hey, uh, I, Sandy. I, thought you were talking, I thought you were talking about Andy, Andy Stanley. Oh. oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, this is Andy Woods, but <laughs> Andy Stanley yeah. is yeah. His bad news, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Sandy, could you tell people... You, you have a lot of papers on Reformed theology and how to understand it and so that you can help refute people who are caught up in yeah. it. Could you tell people what you got and where to find it? I've I've got one that I wrote myself, and I I admit it's probably not perfect, but it's called uh, the, the actual address is OSAS1, I think, dot .html. Anyway, it's on my, it's on my website, and it shows the difference between Calvinism and uh, Arminianism, uh, you know, and uh, that both systems have some wrong elements in them. Wrong. They 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 have partially wrong and wrong and true. They have all three of those things in both systems. And so you really have to not just follow one of those systems. And I discovered when I was going to 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 uh, 
Bible college, I discer- I discovered that uh, all these debates we used to have between you know pre- uh, predestination and free will can be resolved if you just teach what the Bible says. Yep. Teach what the apostles actually taught, and don't go f- into some man's construct of it, but just teach it. And it, it becomes quite clear, you know? Yep. And that's when I discovered, hey, you know, uh, the Bible talks about both of those things, and both of those things are true, you know? Um, we do have a have a will. God God created us with a will. Look at look at Satan, the the prime example. He created him with a will, and he chose to completely leave God, you know, get, you know, and then he tempted Adam and Eve, and they did the same thing. Um, that's our tendency in, in our natural man, is to use our will the wrong way. Um, but we do have a will. We're not without a will. My God is so much greater than the Calvinist God because he actually took a chance, I guess you could say, and created people with a will in his image. So uh, he is not, he doesn't make us robots, you know, like, okay, you're saved, you're all done, you don't have to think about it, just get in the car and I'm the, I'm the limo driver and, you know. <laughs> no, we actually have, there. Yeah. we actually have work to do here. Once we're saved, we need to be doing what the Lord wants us to do. We're light and salt. Without us, I, I don't want to sound egotistical. But without born again Christians, this world is going downhill fast, yep. and we need to help those who actually want to serve the Lord, you know, before it's too late. Well, just a reminder too. Look, if you've got any questions for David or Sandy or Jay, please um, send them in. Um, we've only really got one topic left for today, and that is uh, going back to we. Touched on, <laughs> um, you know, the, the truth becoming a lie, lie becoming and being presented as truth. Well, um, here in Australia on Thursday, our current government introduced what they're calling Australia's uh, misinformation bill. Um, basically, it's an internet internet censorship bill. So they've just introduced this Orwellian communications legislation. Um, bill on Thursday is probably the most dangerous piece of legislation introduced to Parliament in our history. Um, basically, what's fact or fiction will now be determined by the government's Ministry of Truth in Canberra, and anyone with a dissenting view to that of the government will be censored. Um, Communications Minister Michelle Rowland says that the misinformation and disinformation bill hopes to pass it by law by the end of this year, even if it means the part, um, bypassing debate in the Senate about it. So they're, they're determined to ramp this through no matter what. It appears that anyone with a view that's contrary to the government's narrative is going to be in the firing line. So under this bill, you will not be able to even say anything that would undermine confidence in Australia's banking systems. In other words, you wouldn't be able to warn of, you know, like, um, a coming recession or financial hardship, you'll only be able to have positive praise. It, look, this bill is so draconian on so many levels. Um, of course, you won't be able to criticise their health policies. You, we, we all know what, we've had a share of that already. Elon Musk has come out and he slammed the Australian government, calling them fascists over this revamped bill and said it's the biggest attack on freedom in of speech in peacetime Australia. Um, the Australian government wants to find internet plat- platforms up to 5% of their global revenue for failing to prevent the spread of so-called misinformation online. So um, we're, oh, I know we're seeing this all around the world, you know, um, tyrannical governments trying to do this to censor their populations, not protect their citizens, but, you know, um, they want to be the ones, just <laughs> no matter where we are, just... Uh, uh, victims of their propaganda machine. Um, yeah. Now, uh, this is one good thing with Trump. He is um, he is all for free speech. 
Uh, so my questions to you, I guess, um, do you think a similar bill will be tried by the Harris regime if they get in? Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll leave it with you guys. I don't I know if that absolutely... would Go, go ahead, ahead, Sandy. Don't, no, you go, go ahead, Dave. Look, the Democrats have always wanted to censor everything. And now they're coming to a time where they can do it through the internet, through uh, people that will be Stasi-like reporting you. Uh, there were even in Waltz's, uh, the, the vice president uh, running for the Democrat, Waltz, in his state, they created a hotline where you can report your neighbors and things like this. So they already want to do things like this. They know what they want to do. And even we've seen this happening in England with the, if you speak out against a migrant, you're going to jail and then you may be uh, exported to Estonia to do your time. So yes, without a doubt, this is coming. Look, this chastisement that is coming upon the world. If you're a Christian, God's chastisement is for your own good. It, it's, it's, it's for us of what's happening. For the world, it's judgment. They've done wrong. Uh, when you do wrong, God will punish. But if you're a believer, then you should be able to understand this chastisement that's coming. And it's for your own good so that you can get your life right at his coming. And going through this very, very dark time. That's right. Yeah. You know, let's hope that doesn't go through. But yeah, yes. Steve. Yeah. Look, look, I just keep thinking. Well, look, we've got to make as much use of the open door that the Lord's given us while we can. So while we That's still right. have a voice, we need to proclaim God's truth. We need to share His word using. What means we can while we still can use them. Um, Work another while you one, have the light. Yeah, another one who's pushing for this, but he's pushing for it on a worldwide scale, is that of Yuval Noah Harari. A man or a sir, accept him or her, for whatever it might be, it's time for androgyny. Here comes Pat. He's calling for global in internet censorship. But the reason. The reason he's calling for this internet uh, censorship is because he wants AI to be trained. It's all about training AI. He says, yes, we need, we need uh, internet regulation. And that regulation is not about harming the freedom of speech of human beings, he says. It's about regulating the algorithms and the bots. He said, freedom of speech is a human right. It's not a, bite ro not a bot right. So he's putting bot rights ahead of human rights. So where do, where do you all see this heading? Outright communism. This yep. is exactly what happened in the Soviet Union a long time ago, and it didn't work. So we'll see. Are you ready? You ready, Jay? No yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we already played it. Yeah. Oh, they, oh, they already did? saw it. Didn't say it. I didn't yeah. see it. Oh, okay. All right. So no, are we no, going I, backstage I, I now? No, 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 no. We're, 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 we're still going live. So to, to talk about Noah Arari, you know, I'm going to follow up with what Sandy said real quickly. We already see what society has done. Uh, the lunatics are running the asylum. When you have people who can't decide what gender they are, even though God has given them a gender, you have lunatics running the asylum. And by the way, they are hoisted above everybody else's opinion. When the 1% is dictating to the rest of the world how they're going to live, you have the mentally challenged that are in control. And we, this is the same thing that we're seeing here. Noah Harari represents the elite 1% of the world and lives in a world where machines are his friend. Because he, uh, he really doesn't have human friends. I mean, he has probably human admirers, but he probably doesn't have actual human friends. So, yeah, of course, he's going to want to get the machine rights. Yeah. 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 
This, this, yeah, they don't want to be one of the billions that he wants to liquidate. <laughs> yeah. This all goes over also into abortion, but also into euthanasia, which has become a big thing up there in Canada now. And I'm wondering if that's what they're going to start doing out there in Australia. But, uh, you know, it's uh, basically a way to uh, get rid of the old people. It's those old people that they got to get rid of. And I was shocked when I talk, was talking to uh, my nephew some years ago. He's been working for Noah for a long, long time and has been taken in by a lot of this woke, you know, business. And uh, I was arguing with him about <laughs> these uh, at the time that they were investigating the, you know, whether it was a good idea to put uh, windmills in the middle of the Atlantic, which they're doing already right now. And they're already having problems with them. Like the, the sea life is having problems with these things. And I'm sure that the, the ships are going to run into them. But uh, uh, I started to argue with him and he said, you know what? You, you're going to be gone. And it's some, you're going to be gone pretty soon. And, and we'll, we'll fix all the stuff that, that you guys messed up. And I was like, yeah. what? That is your attitude, but that's the attitude yep. I see. I'm looking at the Norval lady on uh, CBS. I think she is. What an attitude that person has! It's like I have the answers. Just shut up and let me tell you what to think. You know, and that is that's the whole generation now. You know, and so we have a few people who are able to dictate everything to everybody. And they're not able to listen to people who actually might have lived for a while and might actually have some wisdom to impart, you know? <laughs> but anyway. Well, the euthanasia thing has been quite an issue here for quite some time. In fact, we've had states that have had it for quite quite a number of years. New Zealand, I believe, the same. But um, well, there was an article I was going to bring up that when Jacob wasn't going to be here, I didn't decide to worry about it, but they're pushing this now in the UK. They're pushing a, a new euthanasia bill in the UK. Uh, yeah. so maybe it's something we can get Jacob to comment on uh, next time. Yeah. Um, so right. I, I believe we got three questions. So um, go backstage. Will we take a backstage day, or do you think? Or yeah, let's let's go ahead and go back to backstage because uh, we're sorry if you're on YouTube. You don't get to participate in uh, backstage because we might talk about something that's not allowed. But uh, if you want, please come to Rumble. Uh, you can come to us. And, of course, you can uh, catch us on, um, well, unfortunately, that's all we have for this week. So you yeah. choose Rumble or X. We will be there. We're going to take questions. And, you know, we can take the fetters of the uh, media complex off and talk about truly things that are important. And we will have Jacob's uh, portion on that or following it. Jacob's portion will be put in right before when we f release the final episode. Okay. So don't miss that. All right. Give us a few minutes. We're going to go to backstage right now. Blessings in Jesus, dear friends. James Jacob Prash here coming to you from Brno in the Czech Republic. I was in Poland earlier today. Now I'm in the Czech Republic for a Bible conference tomorrow. Hence, we're only going to do a, a uh, hot take uh, because of my present circumstances. A lot has happened this week, however, obviously, and I just wanted to comment somewhat on the events. Predictably, the Trudeau government in Canada has accused Israel of genocide and announced an arms embargo on Israel, $60 million in pre-agreed purchases. That was not from a Canadian-owned defense manufacturer, but from the Canadian subsidiary of an American manufacturer. Nonetheless, they have the legal right to 
put an embargo on Israel, and they've done it to the tune of $60 million. Again, this is very much a Genesis 12-3 situation. I am praying very much, and I pray regularly, that the Lord raises his hand against Trudeau and removes his government from power. They are not good for Canada. They're not good for Israel. They're not good for America. They're not good for anybody, um, except for nefarious powers that be. He's a complete hypocrite. He's an enemy of democracy, as he proved during the COVID escapade with the truck drivers in Ottawa and his politicization of, of the Mounties, turning them into a political police force. He's just a bad man. I know people, Christians, who have left Canada because of him and come to the United States because of him. He's a, he's a bad person, and I pray God does remove him. That, however, has not been the main news. Main news has been the aftermath of the debates, the presidential debates. As much as I dislike James Carville, he was absolutely right in what he said. Donald Trump foolishly, foolishly, if not stupidly, walked into a trap. Um, Lynn Davis was a sorority sister of Camilla Harris. ABC is a left-wing news agency owned by a left-wing parent company, the whole LGBTQ reinvented Disney. Um, he walked into a trap very, very foolishly. Um, while CNN may have had an impetus to behave fairly in the debates that they monitored and conducted, simply because the ratings went so low and they had to show fairness, this has not been the case of ABC, although Disney is also in financial trouble, fortunately. Um, I refer, of course, to what Disney has become, not what Disney once was in the days of Walt Disney. It's a different company whose name and ethos and heritage has been hijacked by people that have no resemblance to anything of the original vision of Walt Disney about children and so forth. Nonetheless, that is the case of the situation. Donald Trump was very foolish. I thought he was foolish. The debate itself was loaded. The moderators had their fingers on the scales. It was not fair. Five times, five times, Donald Trump was fact-checked. Fact-checked five times by Mr. Muir. Um, Camilla Harris, although making blatantly, demonstrably false statements, was not fact-checked once. And even Muir made a false statement, saying that a legislation that Donald Trump didn't support wanted to hire thousands of new border agents. That was not true. It was 1,500. <clears throat> but the dishonesty about the way that the event was handled was predictable. And Donald Trump was most, most foolish. There was no winner of the debate in terms of style and delivery, assisted by the biases of the moderators. Harris outperformed Trump. In terms of substance and what he said, Trump outperformed Harris, but neither one of them delivered a knockout blow or anything like it, and it could have been and it should have been. Right from the beginning, Donald Trump was not fighting well. The first question asked was, are people better off financially, economically now than they were four years ago? And she evaded the question. She did not answer it. She could not answer it. She just began delivering circumlocution and rhetoric but not addressing the question. Donald Trump should have come out and said, she did not answer the question. The question was this. She's evaded the question. She can't answer it. I will answer it. Families are paying 23 to 34% more for groceries and staples than they were four years ago. The average price of gasoline went from $1.87 to more than double that under the present administration. There was no inflation when I was president. Inflation has not been this high in quite some since the time of Jimmy Carter. And now interest rates are high. Young people will ha would have to pay double what they had to pay when I was president to get a mortgage for a home. No, nobody is better off. She can't answer the question, and that's why she didn't answer the question. He should have responded right from the beginning, but he didn't. He did not argue well. He did not conduct himself well in the, in the debate. Um, she didn't either. It was all rhetoric. But the people who are Naive, gullible, if you will, stupid enough to vote for someone like her, 
Um, don't, don't care about that. Of course, they're stupid. Most of them are stupid people anyway. Um, they don't know how to think. But it was bad. However, let's look at what we really need to say. The week before the debate, Donald Trump established himself as someone who was no longer a pro-life candidate. He said he was going to vote against the Texas, uh, for the Texas bill that would repeal the Governor DeSantis legislation that with a fetal heartbeat detectable at six weeks fetal gestation, abortion would be illegal unless it was necessary to save the life of the mother or some extenuating medical circumstances, et cetera. He said six weeks is too short of a time. Even though the baby's heart is beating, abort the baby later than six weeks gestation. At that point, at that point, he was no longer a pro-life candidate. This was on top of his antics at Mar-a-Lago when he hosted the homosexual gala. And also the week before last, he advocated decriminalizing, not decriminalizing, legalizing marijuana recreationally, recreational use of a psychedelic drug. Now, bear in mind, the strains of marijuana now have a higher THC content than marijuana used to have. I used to, before I was a Christian, I, I, before I walked with the Lord, I went to Morocco to get stuff called Zero Zero, kind of hashish, that was that powerful. You needed 100 kilos of, 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 of pollen just to get one kilo of Zero Zero. Now, cannabis that powerful is available all over the place. It is no longer a mild hallucinogen. It is a hallucinogen. Not only that, it is pharmacia. It is chemically induced, induced occult mysticism. It is demonic. Um, perhaps non-intoxicating dosages can help increase appetite in cancer patients on chemo, or perhaps it can reduce interocular pressure for glaucoma patients. Things like this in in medical use, but even. Now, the FDA has never approved the medical usages. It states it's illegal. Donald Trump wants to legalize pharmacia. I do not believe God's hand is on him the way it was. Now, I'm not telling people not to vote for him. I'm not telling people anything. I'm simply saying I don't believe that he is the kind of candidate he was. Now, the Lord did save his life when he was shot. And he has been more pro-Israel than other presidents, bearing in mind that Biden and Harris are anti-Israel. No matter what they say, they are anti-Israel. They funded Iran by lifting those sanctions, and they made it possible for Iran to sponsor Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, etc. Um, the only thing Donald Trump is is a lesser of evils, and a lesser of evils is an evil no less. I don't believe God's hand is on him the way it was. I'm not saying he can't win. I'm not saying God will not allow him to win. But I am saying that his poor perform performance in the debate is related to the fact that the Lord is no longer with him in the way the Lord was. Now, I pray that Harris does not win that election. She's a wicked, wicked woman. She's a wicked, evil woman. But Donald Trump is gravely disappointing. Six weeks heartbeat? No, that's not long enough. Let the heartbeat eight weeks, ten weeks. It, the heartbeat proves it is a human life. And Donald Trump wants to extend the age when his life can be terminated embryonically. I'm very, very disappointed in Mr. Trump. As I've been saying all along, I'm not praying he will win. I'm simply praying Harris will lose. That the Lord will show America mercy by keeping her out of the White House. That is all I can say. That's all I can say. But these things go on and on. I believe that what happened was the result of the foolishness of Donald Trump and his campaign managers to walk into that kind of a trap, as James Carville even said it was. I think that 
his male performance is a reflection of the fact that he is not upholding biblical principles as he once did. The main moral issues facing the country, homosexuality and lesbianism, abortion without any medical reason, non-therapeutic abortion, now the recreational use of pharmacia, of mind-altering dr drugs to induce, by chemical means, altered states of consciousness, the mysticism, pharmacia. These are main moral issues. Now, by the way, I have never favored the criminalization of marijuana. I have favored its decriminalization. I'm not saying that people should be criminalized, but the substance itself should not be legalized. Um, and what he said about abortion, going against Governor Santos and so forth, the way he did, and then that gala at Mar-a-Lago with the homosexuals, him and Carrie Lake, he is very, very disappointing. Very disappointing. Yes, God protected his life. Yes, he has blessed Israel more than other candidates. Yes, he has been more sympathetic to evangelical concerns in the past. But once you are caving in on pharmacia and on homosexuality and, and on abortion, um, you're no longer favorable to evangelical concerns. He's nothing but a lesser of two evils, and a lesser of evils is an evil no less. Now, I pray Harris doesn't win. I thank God God protected him. I'd rather have him than Harris. If he gets elected, I'll certainly pray for him every day. But what happened has happened, and it happened for a reason. And the reasons were not just political and bad planning and being naive and gullible and walking into an obvious preset trap by a dishonest news agency. There's more to it than that. Finally, today, in Newton, Massachusetts, in the Boston suburbs, an Iraqi war veteran, he may be a saved Christian, named Scott Hayes, who had a legally licensed weapon, was criminally assaulted by someone wearing a Palestinian flag clip who was screaming at him and other pro-Israel demonstrators from across the street. He lunged and assaulted Mr. Hayes, tackling him to the ground. The assailant, the criminal who assaulted him, was shot. Seriously wounded. I don't know if he's going to survive or not. Now, as a Christian, I don't hope he dies. I hope he repents and gets saved. Hope he becomes a believer. I don't w delight in his death. But if he does die, it will be the consequences of his own actions. Even if Mr. Scott Hayes did shoot him and kill him, it would have been an act of self-defense. It is not clear, however, if he shot in self-defense after he was assaulted and knocked to the ground and this guy was on top of him trying to choke him in a headlock, or if the gun went off in the scuffle. But the gun was legal. The veteran, Mr. Scott Hayes, was within his rights, never should have been arrested, never should have been charged. But in a left-wing state like Massachusetts, where you have district attorneys like Marion Ryan who charged him, he has been charged. He has been charged, despite the fact he was the victim. She charges the victim of the crime, the victim of the assault who defended himself. Assuming that the gun didn't go off in the scuffle after he was assaulted. If this assailant dies, he will have bought it on himself. He will have bought it on himself, and even if Mr. Hayes did shoot him, it would have been in self-defense. I have no problem. No problem. No, I don't prefer the guy's death. I prefer his salvation. But if he dies, he reaped what he sowed. He's a thug, a bigoted thug, and a violent criminal who suffered the consequences of his own actions. This arrest is horrific. I prayed for Mr. Hayes. I pray that the prosecution would collapse, and I personally made a contribution on GoFundMe. I would urge our listeners and viewers to pray for Mr. Hayes and to pray, if possible, for the salvation 
of this pro-Palestinian criminal thug who assaulted him. I don't want the guy dead. I'd rather see the guy get saved. But if he dies, so be it. He did it to himself. He reaped what he sowed. I made a contribution also on GoFundMe. There's a GoFundMe page raising money for the legal defense of Mr. Hayes. Uh, I believe it was appropriate to do that. I would point people to GoFundMe if they're so inclined to help Mr. Hayes' legal defense fund. But this is what's happening. Um, these people are getting more and more violent. We've seen them on university campuses. It's about time people defended themselves. It's about time when you have these thugs going through wanting to kill Jews and all this yelling pro Hamas and even pro Nazi statements. Such people are criminals. People who behave like violent animals do not have the reasonable expectation to be treated like a human being. Honest citizens have the right and the responsibility to protect themselves and their country from such people. It's an injustice. I wish Mr. Scott every success and every blessing. Uh, I hope the charges are dropped. And if they're not dropped, I wish him every legal victory. And I pray that the hand of the Almighty will be against the politically motivated prosecutors who have gone after him in a left-wing state. This is the nature of the situation. This is what's happening. From Canada to Massachusetts, to Jew hatred is increasing. Anti-Semitism is increasing. At least some Jews are waking up, like Alan Dershowitz, and seeing how naive they've been, and seeing what has become of the Democratic Party and leaving it. At least some are seeing it, as are some Afro-Americans and many Hispanics. Nonetheless, that is the situation. That is exactly the situation. That is my hot take. God bless. Yep, no worries. Well, welcome to backstage. Um, we've got uh, your questions are just coming in. So we've got some questions for you guys. I'll start with the first question here. Um, okay. Do you believe that the so-called reptilians that world often speak about maybe fallen angels or demonic entities that have taken human form and maybe in positions of political power well <laughs> you want me to do this one yep go go for it yep all right look these reptilians we don't know if it's true or not true but we do know that People can be deformed when and have things happen to school when they're possessed. Okay, and I don't necessarily believe this reptilian thing because now you've crossed the genius barrier. But we don't know what's lying in the future as people are able to to take people's DNA and then cross them over with other DNA, which are, I call, I think the word is chimia. Uh, they can make two, you know, mice with a brain, you know. So me, I'm not so worried about it. <laughs> um, so it seems to me to be part friction and sensationalism. And, but I don't know what the days ahead when AI comes and, uh, and science is able to manipulate men's DNA. Uh, thanks, David. Okay, I have a question for the panel. Daniel 11 verses uh, 34 and 35. I'll just read them for you if you like. <clears throat> now when they fall, they will be granted a little help, and many will join with them in hypocrisy. And some of those who have insight will fall, to refine, purge, and cleanse them until the end time, because it, because it is still to come at the appointed time. So in verse 34, who are those who join them in hypocrisy? It sounds like these are believers who have temporarily strayed. Um, You want me to do it, Sandy? Go ahead. 
All right. This is a verse warning about the last days. It says, many will join you in hypocrisy. Well, the Bible talks about so-called brothers, okay? And they were actually not even supposed to have anything to do with them. Look, we know that there's outsiders that don't believe and that are immoral. But when so-called brothers, so-called, they act like they're Christian or they say they're Christian, yet there's no fruits of repentance. There's no fruit to the Spirit. And so we're being warned here that people will come in and join us, but at some point they will turn on us and even kill us. They can betray us. Uh, they could turn us over to the government for a loaf of bread, you know, anything like this. So it's important for Christians to have discernment about who they fellowship as things get darker and darker. Right. You're going to need to be able to discern. And so, and we're called to learn to discern, to be able to push on to maturity. But most Christians just, they get born again and they kind of stay in that place and maybe they grow a little bit. But they never learn their Bible. They never learn all the the doctrine that they need and to be able to understand when the Holy Spirit is leading them, telling them, don't go there, don't, don't go ahead, to be able to make decisions based on God's leading, and most importantly, on God's word. So mm. hopefully that handles that for you. So-called believers joining you. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Sandy? No, that's that's exactly what I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think, look, we've even been seeing little glimmers of that already, you know, haven't we? We you know where we have people, their priorities or their their focus is wrong. Their focus becomes on their own ministry or or self or something like that. And um, I, I think we've seen a lot of examples of that in recent years. I think it's only going to get worse, but where we... We've seen betrayal. I mean, I've, and I think look at it's part of um, suffering the sufferings of Christ too, isn't it? Um, Jacob it was betrayed. I think it's something we all go through at some point in our Christian walk, and it's not a very pleasant one. Yeah, Jacob did a teaching on this. It's called uh, "Stars That Shine Forever." Okay, I think that's is that the name of it. Yes, Stars That Shine will actually go up this Tuesday on Throwback Tuesday. I was supposed to put it up uh, for someone last week okay. and I didn't get to it, so it'll be up this week for but sure. Jacob taught that, and that sermon, we had just been visiting Michael Jackson when he died his house. We drove by there and when he was in there, and right off of Sunset, we got a map of all the Hollywood stars, and Jacob used that to do that, teach on that. And 32 people were born again that day. Well, well, sir. Well. Stars that shine. Yep. Um, what do you think is the state of the Philippine Evangelical Church? Uh, it's pretty sad. They yep. have, Filipinos are such wonderful people, and but they do tend to be guided by the emotion. And so when Word of Faith and New Apostolic, some of these movements came into the Philippines, they absolutely took over almost every church in the Philippines. It's it's sad to watch. And these are from some legitimate missions that established the churches there, the Protestant churches. And um, But they all just love this charismatic, you know, signs and wonders stuff and they just went full blown after it, and so it's very difficult to actually find a decent church there these days. Um, and I feel bad for them, but you know, it's that's happened in a lot of a lot of third world countries. It happened all over Micronesia um, yep. when Brownsville came out. Um, before they even came out, I warned everybody. All through the islands, I went to about five or six different islands. We did conferences. I warned them about what these people were teaching, that it was deadly dangerous and to stay away from it. But only on one island that I know of for sure did they actually heed what I was saying. The rest of them jumped right in. 
And it's because they had YWAM there egging them on because YWAM is completely into that stuff. And so they've been a big promoter, you know, and flying people over to Guam and Hawaii to see Benny in and be healed. And it was, it was awful at the time. And uh, so it's been a big battle and it's hard to watch because, you know, for me, we went out there in 1962 with my family and we actually established some new churches there in Palau and did the work out there. And many people, many, many people got saved. And yet uh, then they jumped, they jumped right into this and they didn't have the discernment necessary. And then worse than that, they jumped into the World Christian Gathering of Indigenous People movement, which is basically teaching them that they've always been worshiping God all along, and uh, they just need to go back in their culture and find the supreme being and worship him like they used to worship him by his name, you know. Um, and it's just so sad that they completely adapted that. They flew them over to Davao to their big meeting they had over there. And some of the people that I know really well there just got completely indoctrinated. So um, the Philippines is one of those places, you know, that got just hit up with that. And so it's not the only one. Africa is absolutely ruined over there with Word of Faith teachings. And they've been there for a long time, ever since William Branham, basically. So um, it's it's a, definitely a prayer item, and it takes people a long time to actually get out of Word of Faith teachings because they've been taught false doctrine for so long that they just can't even understand what the Bible is really talking about anymore. And I know that in Marco's church, there's a number of people there who came out of those kind of cults. And it's taken them years to study the Word. Stable. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had one, we had a couple people that actually testified on a video that, that, that uh, Jacob and I did down there. And uh, they said, you know, it, it's like every day when I get up to read my Bible, I have to actually repent almost every time to the Lord for what I've believed about what I'm reading. Because what I, you know, I now understand what it's all about, you know? Wow. That, that takes a lot of fortitude and, and just strength to be able to say, you know what? I've been self-deceived for a long time and I need yeah. to ask the Lord to help me out of this and get back straight. I'm telling you, these cults can absolutely ruin people. Can ruin their faith, you know. Uh, we've, you know, in our in our Zoom Bible study, we've got a couple different people who are in Jehovah's Witness. What an awful cult! It's taking yep. them a long time to straighten out from that. So, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I've I've been over there a long time. And everything Sandy said, unfortunately, is true. And also the character of the kindness of of the Filipino people works against them because they don't want yeah. to confront somebody with the truth of God. If they're off, they just kind of let them. Oh, okay, they're good. They're they're good brothers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But they'll allow people to stay in their sin. And not confront them. Look, you're doing this, brother, you know, and stuff. And so there's that. And some, many are almost childlike in their faith. They have a belief, yeah. but yet they never grow. And then also a lot of the pastors that are maybe teach a true gospel, but all they teach is milk. And they haven't gotten much right. good, serious Bible teaching. And they struggle with... Um, they they struggle with just straight theology in that like yeah. with um they may not be charismatic but they still have picked up some of that and have it in there and and they misuse some of God's word to to teach this stuff that's wrong yeah and and you know when you try to correct them they 
it, it kind of the, their real understanding of theology is just an inch deep. It's very thin. And teach yep. milk. And, and like they have little denominations and they have somebody over here that makes their their uh their sermons up and or topics yeah. and so the ten or twelve Filipino pastors that teach they teach all teach the same sermon on the same thing and mm-hmm. and, and and they have mis I've seen them te- mis teach uh, uh the kenosis passage I, I've seen them each oh. teach on 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 you know various other doctrines actually teach wrong and you try to tell them hey you can't say that that's not true and you know and they but it's the philippines is in a rough spot but so is the whole world the theology is not taught like it used to and also here in america you know, I, I have a lot of churches around me, and when I meet a lot of these teachers, even though they're Calvinist teachers, I was telling Sandy earlier, the Calvinist guys I knew in uh, the late 70s, early 80s, those guys knew their Bible. They knew and memorized the verses, and, and they knew the Calvinism and how to explain it and, and everything, and they loved witnessing, and they were zealous. But these guys... I had to correct a, a Calvinistic pastor and say that that he believed that man was a biparte, a two-part person, That's not, right. not a tripartite. He was embarrassed that I, I asked him that in front of his men's group, and and he was embarrassed. And I'm sorry. And he says, oh, you like to argue. And I go, no, I like to know the truth. But now I hear he's tripartite, so he didn't well, like being good. corrected, but he knew he was wrong. Yeah, you know this is a this is a huge subject actually, but yeah, uh, this has been a problem with missions for many years, and I've been around missions long enough to know that um, there was this kind of attitude of let's get in there, let's evangelize, let's establish the churches, let's set up national pastors, and then we can move on to the next thing. And they moved on to the next thing, but they didn't stay there as mentors for those pastors. And so they're they're kind of left on their own. And uh, that's that happened in so many places in the world, you know? Um, That's what happened in the Philippines. And, you know... um, my whole thing was, you know, if you're if you're you were one of the people who established churches who are an evangelist or whatever, you need to continue to help them and write to them, just like Paul was writing to the churches and trying to help them with issues because they're gonna need help. You know, you can't just up and leave, you know? So that was a a that was something that was in missiology long ago. You know, that was yeah. the whole idea. But they forgot about Paul. They forgot about these good guys, you know, that they continue to be in contact with those churches and have them pass around their letters, you know. Um, so anyway, that's that's a big issue. But Yeah, but that covers the question. Yeah. Well, well thank you. Thank you for that, um, Sandy and David. Um can anyone on the panel comment on the ministry of Chip Ingram? Thank you. Chip Ingram. Chip Ingram. I don't know him. We can look into him by next yep. week. Unless yep. Sandy knows him. Jay? Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I did just look up his website briefly, but yeah, we'll keep that for next week. We'll do a little bit of research on the guy. I think I have heard of him before, but I don't recall too much about it's- him. His ministry is living on the edge. Uh-oh. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whenever they have these edgy titles for their ministry, I always uh, a red flag always goes up immediately. Um, but it could be, you know, it could be okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Week. Yeah, we'll have to look into them. Yeah. Okay. Now I think I think this person just wants our thoughts on this. Um. My grown kids mentioned about science making a new chromosome other than XX and XY. 
I've never heard of that. <laughs> Have any of you guys heard about that? That's kind of pretty freaky. Got made a male and female. It's kind of like, yep. Well, I'm sure they'd like it because then they could, you know, make excuses for themselves. Um, but, uh, yeah, science is capable of a lot of weird things. Uh, I remember back in the day, a long time ago, I was reading a book where the guy was postulating some of the things they could, they could do with with uh, gene, you know, working with genes, and uh, one of them was you could you could theoretically, uh, you know, make a human being with a lion's head or all this weird kind of stuff, and um, it's possibly true, uh, which could then then put you kind of in mind of revelation and going, hmm, I wonder if some of those things are actually real. <laughs> You know, yeah. the locusts with a with a man's head or whatever that was. And um but uh I think that people are foolish enough to f experiment around with that kind of stuff and not think about the consequences and something gets you know well look at what that happened with well, let's see. What happened with a a certain disease recently? <laughs> yes. You know, God there's being experimented with and got released into the world. And um it just you know it's it's just people do not have the wisdom to deal with these issues that God set set down when he made everything. Yeah. He said he made he made them in their kind. In their yeah. kind. If you want to hear anything about that, go to Go to Answers in Genesis. They have a lot of information about how God made the different kinds. You can't, they can't evolve into a different kind. It doesn't work. You know, yeah. there are there are boundaries that God set there. But, you know, the, one of the big issues with the whole LGBTQ thing is that they really want people to, to stop making babies. You get enough of that stuff going on, and... You know, they're always concerned about population control. It's been a big thing with globalists for for decades, you know, centuries. Uh, they want, you know, that's part of that, you know. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that they want. You put that together with abortion and euthanasia and all these other things, it's population control. Yep. No, I'm Arari, just reminded. Just mentioned Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just I'm just reminded uh, of of Exodus in the fact that by the power of God you can turn a staff into a snake, but also by the power of the secret knowledge of man you can turn a staff into a snake. So science, when it's used without any intention of giving God glory, it can do some pretty false, miraculous things. Yeah, scary things. And with the knowledge that we, we have ever increasing knowledge, but there's going to be a time where God will say no more. We don't Thank know heaven. The, the heart of man it's, is capable of doing He's anything. going to come back and change things the way yeah. they should have been. Amen. Um, yeah. I That's remember right. years ago when I got alerted to some of this stuff, it was also uh, I was doing research about a false revival down in Guatemala. And I found out that Monsanto was down there um, experimenting. They couldn't use the chemicals that they had developed in the U.S., so they went down to Guatemala and they started experimenting, and they were growing these huge vegetables. I mean, huge. And uh, so, you know, they're all, the, the, the revivalists were going, oh, the God is, the God is, making huge vegetables down there in Guatemala. The, the the glory of the Lord is there and all this kind of stuff. But then then to find out, uh, it was actually poisoning people. <laughs> these, these vegetables they were eating were poisoning people. And then also um, the whole thing about Roundup, the guy said, you know, the danger about that whole thing is that, well, the, now they found it's cancerous. But at the time, they said, you know, they, they made these plants, they're like the soybeans. They made the soybeans immune to Roundup. And so you can spray Roundup right on the soybeans and it kills 
off the weeds right next to them. And then somebody pointed out, but there are there are plants that are related to the soybeans <laughs> that are also going to become immune to that. <laughs> and they're weeds. <laughs> and I just went, see, they didn't even think about that stuff. You know? <laughs> they didn't care. Just, you know, sell it. Make some money. Yeah, man. You know, I just got on the national. I just got on the National Institute of Health, and it says researchers are assembling the first complete sequence of a human Y chromosome, and so oh. they are trying to mess around with our chromosome, and they want to produce. Uh, uh, so once they've got this thing, this fully sequenced. They're hoping to be able to help with uh, production and babies and sexual development. Very. Very. So man is capable of doing evil things. So um, so it's taking a Y chromosome and adding it to another and trying to find a way to do things different, you know. And yep. so they're saying if this same sentence can be repeated millions and millions of times, it it keeps stripping the, the chromosome of everything it needs to produce this, and they're going to end up with two Ys or something, you know? So, look, this yep. is all in development, and, you know, possible? Maybe. You know, maybe God will say no before we get there. Yeah. So, I, I, so I they are trying to do it. So, yeah. They are trying to yep. do it. I hope the Lord doesn't let of us course. get that far. Yeah. Uh, another question. I still struggle to understand election and predestination. And all, and although I made peace with trusting God with things that are above my finite understanding, we are still encouraged to dig deeper and know our Lord more and more. I have listened to some of Jacob's teachings on this, and here is where I stand. I believe Jesus died for all people. I believe that salvation is offered to every single person, but not every person believes in him and accepts his salvation. Jacob says the Bible speaks of a quickening, that God gives a measure of life so that a person may respond to God's drawing. Am I right to understand that God quickens everyone at some point in their lives, but not everyone responds in faith? And how do we then understand a verse like Acts thirteen forty eight? I would so appreciate your help in this. Okay. Like yeah. Well, I don't. I don't believe that God gives quickening to every person. He died uh, to pay the price, pay the penalty for their sins, but they have to believe in Him. And in order to believe in Him, there's a process that has to happen. First of all, they have to hear the gospel message preached by someone. They have to actually hear and understand the gospel message. And then the Holy Spirit will come and help them to understand because they, they're darkened. Their mind is darkened and their spirit is sinful that, yes, they are sinners and they are under judgment and they need the Savior and they need to believe in him. And then that's when a person has a choice to make. At that point, he can make a choice. He can not make a choice before those things happen, but he can make a choice once the Holy Spirit convicts him. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit came to convict people of their sins. And so he comes and convicts them of their sin. And if they really believe the gospel and they believe who Jesus Christ is, they will repent of their sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will give them a new spirit, and he, his Holy Spirit will come in. So, um, you know, that's how we are to understand those issues. You know, he's not—the Holy Spirit hasn't come into every person in the world. No, that, that's not what that's all about. But he did come to die for every person. In other words, the, the offer of salvation is there for every person. And that's the wonderful part. So, yeah. Uh, Does that answer the question, I hope? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very so they much. Could, 
and they could go read your papers on Reformed theology that might help them too. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, information on that on my site, uh, you know, in various locations. I also have some DVDs up on my ACT TV site as well. And I know that Jacob has some great, great teachings on that stuff too. So, I, Yeah, I highly recommend it. If you haven't watched it already, Jacob did a teaching called Electos. It should be up on, um, it was a, yeah. put up last year on a, as a throwback third, uh, Tuesday. So, yeah, you should be able to find that. I remember that one. one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also a quarterly if you like to read. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Okay. Well, one, one final question. Um, what about Catherine Coolen? One of our female <laughs> leaders likes her. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Coolen was a false teacher and a false prophet. She did slay in the spirit. She was a follower of people like William Branham and, you know, Amy Semple McPherson. Uh, unfortunately, Chuck Smith became big friends with her. She was very good at sort of fooling people, uh, you know, and making people think that slaying the spirit was a good thing. But <laughs> all you got to do is look at some videos of her. From her time, and they're scary. She's hmm. like, she looks like some kind of witch or something, you know, when she's trying to <laughs> slay people in the spirit and stuff. And so I have a number of articles on Catherine Coleman. Um, a good source is uh, some of Kurt Koch's writings in Occult ABC and other books where he actually went to Catherine Coleman uh, meetings. And, uh, you know, and they, you know, he went to also went to William Branham meetings and uh, excellent material. You can understand that what people said at the time was they said that she was a spiritist. She was a spiritualist and um, dealing with spirits, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we're, we've gone away from that because this stuff came into so many churches but you know what? It is spiritism. There's a spirit behind it. The Bible says, test the spirits, because many false prophets have gone out. Who's behind the false prophets? Evil spirits. And so you got to test them. Test what they're teaching, test what they're prophesying, and test what they're doing. Test the fruit. Uh, by the way, this is all <clears throat> in my last lesson I just did. Uh, it's up on my website. Um, it's called uh, uh, Discernment uh, Number Two, and it's from um, uh, my book called Finish the Race. And there's a section in there that goes right through and says what we need to be doing as Christians, testing their prophecies, testing their teaching, testing the fruit, uh, and judging rightly. Yes, we are to judge. Paul said, judge what I say. A false teacher will say, don't judge. That's the, that's the difference between a false teacher and a true teacher, if you want to know a quick one. If they say, don't judge, judge not, lest you be judged. And, you know, using that out of context, you already know they're a false teacher. Because <laughs> Paul was commending them for judging what he was saying. So that's what we're supposed to do. Yep. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Um, yeah, I think you totally agree with you with Catherine Coleman too. It's kind of like she always looked really weird about the eyes. It's kind of like a oh, very oh, weird. It reminded me of that uh, made out of the movie Rebecca Alfred Hitchcock thing, where and right. it, where she he got her not to blink every time she was on screen. She, it's very yeah. scary, and you know we know that Benny Hinn. Uh, was given the keys to Amy Semple McPherson's tomb in Los Angeles. And he also used to go to Catherine Coleman's tomb. And he would go into their tomb and he would absorb the anointing. He would get lay on her grave and uh, soak. Lay on her grave. Soaking. And this is where Bethel got their whole soaking thing at, you know. Yeah. So then they're they're laying on all these people's graves to get the anointing. And I'm going, I don't think you're getting the anointing that way. Oh, you're getting something. The wrong anointing. 
Again, the evil spirit is just clear. You know, we got uh, Bethel, uh, um, Bill Johnson's wife, uh, laying on C. C. S. Lewis's grave to get his anointing. Well, the Bible's quite clear in Exodus. Uh, I think it's thirty. Well, I can't remember now. Thirty-two or thirty-three, where uh, the Lord says, "Don't pour this uh, anointing oil on anyone else. It's for you." It's for each person individually. Our anointing is from the Lord. It comes from the anointed one who is Jesus Christ. So we can't like then press that anointing into somebody else's forehead and throw it across a room. That's absolutely anti-biblical from the get-go. So <laughs> people that don't know that, they think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Well, we're doing laying on of hands. That was not what that was for. That was to agree with the Lord for his purposes, for that person, whatever they may be. If it's to send them out to be a missionary or, you know, to preach the gospel, or if the Holy Spirit uh, comes on them, you know, for his purposes, great. But it's not the person actually zapping somebody. You know, we got, you know, Benny Ann was one of the early ones that advocated all that. Of course, William Branham back further. But, you know, he was teaching Rodney Howard Brown, you know, how to do that, you know. And so then they would line people up and teach them, you know, how to slay people in the spirit and all that. That stuff was an absolute foothold of Satan in churches. Ah, I feel so bad for people that bought into that. And some of them are having a hard time ever getting out. So, awesome. Yeah, thank the look. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, David. Jay, welcome. I, I do apologize to. The, there's a couple in the chat. I've missed your questions this week, but I'm just getting them, saving them for next week. They'll be asked first off next week. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, being here today, Sandy. I really appreciate it, and thank you for all watching and, uh, you know, <laughs> being patient <laughs> with me. Um, Jay, would you like to clo close this out with a final word of encouragement? Yes. So I've been with Morial a few years now, and there's a sentence that I hear over and over again, and it's, I can't find a local church to be with like-minded Christians. I can't find a biblically sound Christians. Well, I mean, my, the encouragement I want to give you this week, if you're in a desert spiritually and you can't find anyone else to have fellowship with, perhaps, and I'm just saying perhaps, perhaps the Lord's telling you it's time to disciple someone. Perhaps the Lord is telling you it's time to evangelize. Perhaps the Lord is challenging you and making you rise to the occasion to be that light in that dark place in which you live and which you dwell. Perhaps he's asking you to be the light, uh, the salt, to preserve the people around you. So if you are struggling to find other Christians that are willing to open the Bible and study it with you, find unbelievers that are willing to listen to what the Bible says. Yes, that that's my encouragement, and my challenge, because we live in times where we all who have any type of discernment can see the Lord is on his way and time is short. So I pray that he would embolden in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Oh, th thank you so much, Jay. And look, I look, I can. Totally testify with what you're saying is true too. It's kind of like we only have a small little um, house group here and it basically just started. Two of us were thrown together through, <laughs> um, well, the Lord orchestrates things. And look, if you're truly seeking, he'll bring someone across your path. And things start small. Never despise the day of small beginnings. Be faithful in little and you'll be surprised. And when, also, I would say... Being able to do these Zoom Bible studies is a real blessing. And if you're looking for some fellowship, it's not the ultimate, but it's helpful. It's very helpful to be able to get teaching every week by people who really know what they're talking about. 
And so, you know, I, Marco and, and Jacob and myself and others, you know, it's just, it, it's a real resource. So tune in, you know, join the group. Yeah. Uh, Thank you all for watching. Don't be sure to join us next week. Don't miss our episode 200. Jacob should be here. Marco should be back. Hopefully we'll have a full house and, uh, God bless you all. Have a great week in the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, guys. See you, guys. Hello, and thank you for watching Morial TV. There are so many things that are happening at Morial Ministries worldwide, from the Philippines to Japan, to India to Africa, and back to Europe and the United States. So many of our brothers and sisters are spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to this lost world. We are so thankful for your prayers. God has been faithful and has blessed us in so many ways. If you'd like to partner with our efforts abroad and at home, please take a moment to click the link in the description and help us as the Lord leads you. Thank you very much and God bless.